Good evening, everybody. Agenda review session for Wednesday, July 1st, 2015. We have ordinances on second reading, 502, an ordinance to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title 16, Land Development Code. Ordinances on first reading. We have none. Resolutions. 501, approve agenda minutes. 502, approve payroll. 503, authorize refund for redeemed tax sale certificates. 504, approve request for use of city property requested by Key Rondell Stevens Memorial Scholarship Fund. The location is New Globe Park Jogging Path and Pavilion Area for a walkathon benefit Key Rondell Stevens Memorial Scholarship Fund. Saturday, October 17, 2015, from 12.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. 505, approve request for use of city property. Requested by Iglesia Cristina Del Dios Vivo Incorporated. Location, George Kimber Park, for a religious event with music and prayer. Saturday, August 1st, 2015, the date. Saturday, August, wait, rain date, I'm sorry. Saturday, August 8th, 2015, 5 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. 506, approved request for use of city property. Requested by George Dawson, Chairman of the Historical Association. The location is Dubelo Park Mansion Lawn. For memorialization of George Washington, American Army, 1778 FEU, Dijon Celebratory Rifle Salute, and second anniversary of congressional approval of the Declaration of Independence. The date is Saturday, July 4th, 2015. The time is 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. 507, approved request for use of city property requested by a woman's worth organization. Location is Bugalow Park Jogging Path Pavilion Area for a 5K walkathon. Saturday, October 31st, 2015. Time is 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. 508, approved request for use of city property requested by Gold Action Rutgers Cancer Institute, New Jersey. The location is Bugalow Park Jogging Path and Pavilion Area. For 5K fund walk, run walk to support cancer education research with the health fair. Day to Sunday, August 16, 2015, time is 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. 509, approved request for use of city property requested by New Brunswick Soccer League Incorporated. The location is Boyd Park. For Mexican culture event with music and food, the date is Sunday, July 5, 2015. The time is 12 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Police extra duty. 510, approved amendment to resolution R051566, reason to pay additional legal fees in the amount of $1,563.50 to Mitzner and Mitzner. For police officer Andrew Weiss in the matter of Rodriguez, police officer Andrew Weiss from 12,510 to 147350. 511, approve ABC liquor license rules 2015-2016. 512, approve rejection of bid and authorization to rebid. For automotive body repairs for the police department, rebid specification 43715 PR. 513, approve award of contract with Safety League Incorporated doing business as Atlantic Tactical for furnished and delivered work uniforms. For housing inspections and fire prevention, the term is 12 month period, commencing July 2nd, 2015, and ending July 1st, 2016. Specification number 43915P, not to exceed 12,666.09. 514, authorized purchase by Police Department, Detective Bureau, under state contract A, 88780-T2007, from Hertrick Fleet Services. Incorporated for one, 2015 Dodge Durango, not to exceed 27,365. 515, approved request for parking of vehicles in Bugalow Park. Requested by Falsica, Fal Falsica Mechanical for 25 parking permits. The date is May 1st, 2015 to October 31st, 2015, Monday through Friday. Between the hours of 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., cost of 30 per vehicle per month, non pro tunnel. 516, approved request for street closing. Requested by the Promised Church of God. Location is Lee Avenue between Sedan and Townsend Streets for Community Youth Fest. Date, Saturday, July, July 18, 2015. Time is 9.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Police extra duty. 5.17, authorized purchase by the police department under state contract A. 83925 from Carousel Industries in North America Incorporated for Airbus Vesta 911 system. Not to exceed 3.30, 53.65. 518, approved amendment of resolution R051577. Reason to pay additional legal fees in the amount of $2,014.50 to Mr. and Mr. Police Officer Brad Burdell in the matter of Deloche. First Officer Brad Burdell from 2569.25 to 2783.75. 519, approved amendment of resolution R121460. Installation of four gravity dampers at the water treatment plant with Nancy's Brothers Incorporated for temperature control, HVAC maintenance, and repairs, not to exceed 8,800. Approval of this amendment will constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 
approve amendment resolution R 011589. This is 520. Reason authorized additional services were hydraulic modeling under existing contract to be paid from developers escrow with Hatch Moss McDonald LLC for 2015 miscellaneous supplemental engineering services. 521. Approve amendment, approve amendment of resolution R 021548. The reason additional supplemental services in connection with the bidding and construction constant. Consultation phases for the library pump station improvements project with TM Associates for professional engineering services for railroad avenue pump stations improvements. Specification number 832-13 RFP, not to exceed 18,500. Approval of these supplemental services will constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 522, approve renewal of agreement with Aetna Healthcare, traditional and pros contract. I'm sorry, and pause contract. Term July 1st, 2015 to June 30th, 2016, not pro tump. 523, approval of water contract with S Brothers Incorporated for terminal road improvement. Specification number 885-15, not to exceed 446, 347. 524, authorized tax collectors to transfer credits on several tax and utility accounts. 525, disposition of charges against Hermana Uceta. Fecca Germania Gomez, Administrator, CPA of the Estate of Stephen Gomez, trading at the Palace Bar. Liquor license number 1214-330190005. approved person and permanent transfer of liquor license, a pocket license, from Jazz Incorporated to Thyro Gaira, Ravi Liquor license number 1214-33-033002. Sorry if I'm getting the name wrong. 527, held at the request of city engineer. 528, approved release of site performance bond in the amount of 270200 to St. Peter's University Hospital for emergency room drop-off reconfiguration. 254 Eastern Avenue, block 449, lot 11.01. 529, approved release of site performance bond in the amount of 59940 to Francisco Garcia, and Julio, and Juana Cerda. For 156 French Street, Block 165, Block 17, 18.01, and 19. 530, approved 159 budget insertion. State of New Jersey, Division of Highway Transportation Safety for FYI 26 pedestrian safety grant, the amount is 15,000. 531, advise and consent to the appointment of Mark Robinberg as Director of Boarding Children. 532, approve a continuation of conditions for 2015-2016 liquor license. For Platinum Lounge, LLC training as Pearl and Glove. Routine passes through the collection number 1214 Mr. Counselor, yes. that one really should be approval of conditions and renewal of that license. It's both the approval of special conditions and the renewal license. The, the resolution is the proper form. Thank you, sir. 533, approved authorization to advertise for 2015 sanitary sewer system improvements, phase one, specification number 892-15. I believe that's it. Okay, call the meeting to order, please. Council Member Anderson. Here. Council Member Escobar. Here. Council Vice President Fleming. Here. Council Member Garlotti. Present. Council President Egan. Here. Please be advised that the notice required for the open public meetings after the propriety was satisfied that the annual notice, which gave sufficient notice of the time and place and conduct of all public meetings of the municipal council of the city of New Brunswick, has been filed with the city clerk, has been placed on an appropriate bulletin board in the lobby of City Hall in Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been tra transmitted to the official newspaper for the city of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have a moment of silence for our men and women in our armed forces, for our men and women in our armed forces who have lost their lives in battle. We also I would like to have a moment of silence for Mr. Dunbar, who was a longtime New Brunswick teacher, and for Mr. John Hoagland, who was a former city commissioner. Thank you. We have approval of minutes of minutes from June 3rd. I have a motion for the minutes. Motion. Second. 
Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. Uh, Mr. Shammy, are we going to move into the public hearings for the uh, liquor license establishment? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Council President, members of Council. Uh, tonight we have agendized three public hearings. Uh, number one and two are public hearings on special conditions relative to uh, the Tierra Bar and the Gala Cafe and Restaurant. Number three is uh, administrative charges proffered by the police department against that third licensee. Um, we can take them in that order, um, number one being Persiv Inc. trading as Meteor Bar. I know for the record, Mr. Gustis is here uh, representing the licensee, and I believe the principal licensee is also here, Mr. Sudha Kumar. Uh, for purposes of the record and to refresh the public and the council's recollection, this is a license that was renewed uh, last year and for the last several years with special conditions and um, if I could just read the special conditions that have been in place over the last <coughs> license year and at that particular point in time um, I expect we could open it up to a public hearing I don't know if Mr. Gustis wants to address the council uh, I know he's here I think he might be outside with Ms. Yeah in the hallway speaking about another matter but maybe okay. by the time I get through the reading I would have back in the room all right, the special conditions are as follows. Um, licensees shall hire uniformed police officers from the city of New Brunswick or from an outside municipality or uniform personnel from a licensed private security firm to maintain security on or about the licensed premises while the premises are open for business during the hours of 9 p.m. to closing on Friday and Saturday. Licensees shall also furnish monthly written reports of the names and addresses of such individuals so employed that the New Brunswick Police Department Attention Special Investigations Unit. Two, licensees shall maintain order on and within the licensed premises. Three, licensee shall police the sidewalk adjoining the licensed premises at each day that the premises is open for business. Four, licensees shall not alter the layout of the premises from that shown in the sketch previously filed with the city clerk without a further resolution of council. Five, licensees shall continue to use the existing video cameras, shall annotate all film for time and date, and shall maintain said tapes for at least 30 days. And six, licensees shall be in compliance with ordinance 0 029609 as amended relative to educational requirements for owners and managers. Um, it's my understanding, uh, and I believe uh, Officer uh, Graw is here uh, from the New Brunswick Police Department. Uh, at least he was a minute ago. He's here. Okay, he's in the hallway as well. Um, my understanding from speaking with Officer DeGraw that uh, it's the Police Department's uh, position uh, that these same special conditions be reimposed um, on the licensee at the time of renewal. Just a, a reminder, we are not prepared to renew the license this evening. This is just the opportunity for the public hearing on the special conditions once the license is ready for renewal. Thank you. Okay. In fairness to Mr. Gustis, who represents uh, Meteor, uh, perhaps his client could go get him in the hallway before we hear from anyone. Um, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on the Meteor? Please step up to the microphone. And I'll let you know when you can we can proceed when Mr. Gustis gets in the room. Right. Yes. And Mr. Gustis may want to yes, address the council before the public why, comment. Why would the public would go first? That's fine. Whatever your pleasure. Thank you. But he, he should be here to hear it. I know. I'm waiting. I got you. Hello, Mr. Gustis. Uh, these people are going to speak on, behalf, on, on the uh, Meteor. Uh, we just wanted to have you in the room when they're speaking, sir. Okay. We'll, we'll have you comment after, if that's okay. Well, after, I, I'm now talking about another one. So can I do it later in the evening? I mean, I'll, they can talk now, and I'll listen to them. Okay. But when I make my comments, do I have to make them right after they speak? No, we'll wait till they're all done, and then you can okay. make your comments. No problem. Yes, sir. Can I, if, if we're um, 
making suggestions about schedule. No, um, we're not. Okay. Thank you. Well, he, he just did. No. No, he asked me a question. Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, my question is, if it would be possible in the order of the hearings to do me at a last, perhaps, because with the earlier start time of the council right uh, during the summer, we know we have some, some members who'd like to be here, like to speak, who uh, are coming from work, and it's a little hard yeah, for them no, to No, sir, we're ready to go here. We already spoke about it. We started that, so we're going to move right with the media. Go ahead, sir. Buenas tardes. Disculpen mi escasez de inglés. Mi nombre es Rafael Sánchez. Yeah. 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 Okay. Try to go, try to uh, let your uh, uh, friend know the short short sentences for the, so we can help the lady. Just to let everybody know, we have a, we have a court reporter here taking uh, taking down the, uh, everybody's. Uh, Mr. Council yes. President, actually, we do have a certified court uh, translator okay. here. Okay, perfect. Okay. perfect. Can you announce can you yourself? Yes, yeah. yeah. can you identify yourself for the record, please? Yes, good afternoon. My name is Sarah Cohen, Spanish interpreter. I'm here all through Worldwide Language Services. Thank you very much. Good evening. Okay. Start again, sir, please. Shorter, don't, don't let's go a little shorter as far as it says. Somos un equipo del Proyecto Esperanza. We are a team of the Esperanza Project. Enfocándonos a la limpieza, la seguridad. We are focusing in cleaning, in the cleaning and in the security. Y la mejor convivencia en la comunidad. And the, in the, and, and getting along in the best manner. ¿Qué hemos hecho? Mejorando la fresca. No mejorando la norma. Limpiezas. What uh, have been uh, we have been doing well improving uh, the cleaning? Limpiezas en la French y las calles adyacentes. Cleaning of French Street and the adjacent uh, streets. Invitando igualmente a los residentes a colaborar con nosotros. Inviting at the same time to the residents to cooperate with us. Hemos tenido reuniones de vigilancia con la policía. We have uh, had uh, reunions, meetings with uh, the police. Dándoles a conocer por parte de la comunidad. Letting them know uh, by the community. Los lugares que ven más inseguros. All the, all the places that are more unsafe. Siendo atendidos con el detective Pulso, por el detective Pulso y el policía Mejía. Detective uh, Hudson and uh, the police. Mejía, que, Mejía nos ha escuchado, que nos han escuchado. Who both listen to us. ¿Por qué nos enfocamos ahora en mi tierra? What are we focusing, focusing now in mi tierra? Lógicamente, en las barras hay disturbios, pero ahí ha habido más, más violentos. Of course, uh, we, there are commotions at the bars, but uh, siendo more, more violent. Uh, siendo frecuentados Recently, por gente más violenta y negativa. And bars have been frequented um, by violent people and negative people. Y su ubicación merece que sea un lugar más, tra más tranquilo porque es muy frecuentada su ubicación. And the place, the location, deserves to be in a better place because it's a it's a place that it's a very much uh, frequented. As a resident Okay. 
Chris. Yes, yeah, but you got all this time. Just well, I want to thank you. Gracias y buscamos mejorar la comunidad. Thank Tanto you. Hispanos como americanos mejoremos la comunidad. And we are looking uh, to improve the place uh, for the Hispanic community as well as for the American community. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. I just, I need his name. Rafael What we did to improve uh, the situation, hemos invitado a las reuniones al dueño de la barra Mi Tierra. We invited to our meetings to the owner of the bar Mi Tierra para poder llegar a unos acuerdos sobre las dificultades y to be able to reach some agreement about the difficulties. A la reunión no asistió, sino que mandó unos representantes y nos escucharon. He himself did not attend uh, to the meeting, but he sent representatives las to attend. Las inquietudes que tenemos como comunidad. Uh, we discussed about the issues uh, about the community, community issues. Eh, nosotros hicimos unas encuestas con los residentes, visitando lo que es la French y lo que pedimos unos resultados. We uh, we did some questions to the residents, especially on French Street. Surveys. 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 Another 42% say that the safety during the daytime is more or less. Pero más del 10% dice que se siente seguro o muy seguro en la noche. But more than 10% say that they feel safe or at night time. 77% dice que se siente inseguro o muy inseguro. 77% say that they feel unsafe or very unsafe. La noche, en la noche. En la noche el tiempo que se cierran las tiendas y las barras son las que están activas. At night, uh, the, uh, en la noche cuando se cierran las tiendas. When the stores are closed at night, las barras están activas. The bars are active. 42% dice que hay evidencia de intoxicación pública y actividades ilegales relacionadas con la droga. 42% say that there are um, illegal activities at night and that has to do also with drugs. También preguntamos si hay negocios en la French que son una molestia o que hace peor la experiencia de visitar la French. We also ask if there are... Uh, uh, <laughs> we also ask si hay negocios en la French if there is any business on French que son una molestia that... Uh, or as an or experience or it makes the experience uh, to visit French French it makes it worse. La mayoría dice que sí y y most of them responded yes. Y precisa que las barras y las tiendas de licor son molestas. And they say that the bars and uh, and the liquor 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 stores that that um, cause uh, the nuisance. Um, and Mi Tierra is the only bar that the surveyors specified with that name. Identified. Identified. We also want to clarify that we are neighbors que of the community. Que nos la los and we are worried for the um, 
unsafe, uh, unsafe uh, city and also the crimes. Queremos este, que la French también se vea vista como, por ejemplo, George Street. We want uh, French to be seen like uh, George Street. O otras calles parecidas. Or other streets uh, similar to that. Entonces queremos algo seguro para nuestros hijos, ya que hay un parque por ahí. So we want something safe for our, for our children because it, there is a park around there. También este, decimos que esto no es un ataque específicamente contra la barra y tierra, sino que queremos mejorar la perspectiva de todo. We Gracias. also want to say that this, this is not an attack to the bar in Tierra. We want to improve. The, we just want improvement and safety. Thank you. Point of order. Uh, for the, the last uh, hearing on a, on a liquor license, you said there was no five, limit, five minute limit. Uh, why is a different standard being applied tonight? Thank you. Was that the last meeting? You said, I spoke about Perlay and you gave you said that, you said that it didn't apply. No, I didn't say that. I don't think so. Well, I also, it's, also not, it's also not fair to people for them to, to have their statements translated. They have half as much time. Excuse me? They have half as much time as five minutes if their statements are being translated. It's not fair to them to put a five minute time limit on it and, and it's counting while the translation is going on. It's not fair to them. Thank you, Mr. Prado. Continue. Continue. Hola, mi nombre es Rabiela. Hello, my name is Mirza Rabiela. I want to tell you something about what's going on uh, with the bar. El reporte de la policía sobre las barras. The police report uh, about the bars. Dice que la policía recibió 75 llamadas sobre mi tierra el año pasado. Says that uh, the police received 75 uh, phone calls. Uh, of 75 phone calls uh, of the bar uh, about the bar in Tierra. El año pasado. Last year. Más que cualquier otra barra de la ciudad. More than any other bar in the city. 35 de las llamadas tenían que ver con disturbios o personas alborotadas. 35% of the calls had to do with uh, disturbances and uh, or personas alborotadas or uh, disorders. Disorder, uh, people that cause disorder. Y además de los problemas diarios, in addition to the daily problems, Hubieron tres incidentes más graves en mi tierra en el año pasado. There were three serious uh, problems last year at mi tierra. En la noche del sábado 6 de septiembre, on Saturday night, se September 6, hubo un tiroteo en el parqueo de Walgreens. Des there was a shooting in the parking lot of Walgreens. Después de una pelea after a fight de clientes en mi tierra. Of customers at mi tierra. Tres días después, three days later, el 9 de septiembre, on September 9, la policía arrestó a un hombre que entró a la barra, the police arrested a man who entered the bar, con un arma ilegal, with a uh, illegally armed. El 28 de marzo, March 28, hubo una pelea, there was a fight, de varios clientes en la barra, of uh, several customers in the bar, que terminó con tres personas heridas a cuchilladas. It, and it ended up with three uh, wounded people with stab one wounds. Todos estos incidentes de violencia, all of these violent incidents, mm -hmm. sucedieron con las restricciones happened with the, the restrictions actuales de la licencia de mi tierra. On the present restrictions of the license of mi tierra. Con su personal de seguridad with the security people. And quisiera decirles que nos gustaría que que pusieran más lo que estamos pidiendo es más seguridad. What I would like to ask you is to to please uh, uh, provide more security, more safety for the bien de todos toda la comunidad. For the well-being of the entire community. Gracias. Thank you. And I forgot to distribute these packets um, to the council members. 
which includes uh, press reports on the three in incidents uh, specified. <coughs> he's uh, he's received the, the letter to the council. Yes. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Esther Herrera. Good afternoon. My name is Esther Herrera. Ah, uh, estamos aquí. Somos del grupo Esperanza. We are here, and we are of the Esperanza group. Este con el motivo de de que nos pongan un poquito de atención tocante la barra mi tierra. Because we are asking you to pay a little bit more of attention to the issues of the bar mi tierra. Ustedes como autoridad en el pueblo. And you as the authority of the city. Que este, en la barra mi tierra hay muchos problemas. There are many problems at mi tierra bar. Uh, siempre hacen fiestas. They always... Uh, uh, handle parties y siempre terminan con pleitos en la calle they always end up with fights in the street y a veces hasta las 5 o 6 de la mañana están saliendo de ahí and sometimes they are leaving uh, from the bar at 5 or 6 in the morning y uno a esa hora pues ya se va para su trabajo y salen los borrachos ahí diciendo disparates and at that time we go out, we leave out of, to go to work, and we see the drunk people saying uh, cursing. Y lo que nosotros estamos este, pidiéndole a la autoridad. When we are asking to the authorities, si pueden poner más un policía para que vigile if, los hechos. If you can provide a police officer to Watch out uh, the facts, the area. Y este, porque siempre hay mucha violencia. Because there's always uh, so much violence. Yo soy vecina de ahí, del, de cerca de mi tierra. I am a neighbor of near mi tierra. Y a veces me toca ver de que el de seguridad, según saca los borrachitos y los avienta ahí a la calle. And sometimes I get to see that the security person takes the drunk people out of the street. Y a veces va uno con los niños y los niños se asustan al ver eso. Ellos. And sometimes we are with children and they get scared when they see that. <coughs> y ahí también hay un motivo de que los niños aprendan a la violencia. And this is also like uh, when the children see this, they learn uh, about violence. Y lo que queremos es de que la autoridad ponga un policía. What, I, what we want is the authority provide with a police officer para que vigile más, este más pendiente. To uh, survey or uh, see the area. Bueno, gracias por su atención. Well, yes, thank you for the your attention, and this is all that I had to say. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Hola, buenas noches. Hello, good evening. Mi nombre es Bonfilia Hartin. My name is Bonfilia Hartin. Bonfilia Hartin. Um, yo soy residente del área donde está la barra mi tierra. I am a resident uh, in the area where uh, the bar mi tierra is located. Um, Prácticamente nosotros estamos aquí como proyecto, nos, nos hemos unido como proyecto. We practically united to be here as a project. Um, porque queremos ver un mejoramiento en el área de la French. Because we want to see improvement in the French area. Eh, hemos tenido muchos problemas con esta área. We have had many problems in that area. Um, Cuando uno pasa, yo soy madre de familia. When we pass by the area, I am a mother. Um, un día sacaron violentamente a un, una persona ebria. One day, they removed a, a drunk person in a violent way. Lo aventaron hacia la carretera. Uh, 
uh, that person was pushed to the street. Yo jale a mi hija, sino el, el, la persona ella cae encima de mi hija. I pulled my uh, daughter, otherwise the drunk uh, person would have fallen on top of my daughter. Um, yo vivo cerca de ahí, no puedo dar mi dirección. I live near the area, but I am not able to provide my address. Porque por problemas personales. Due to personal problems. Pero sí me, sí me cuestiona mucho ese problema que está pasando con esta vara. But it, is, it honestly raises so many questions about this issue of the bar. Prácticamente ahí hay paradas de buses escolares. And practically there are uh, stop, bus stop, uh, school bus stop. Que pasan por el área donde está la vara mi tierra that pass by the area where the Sierra is located. Y todo el tiempo hay personas ebrias afuera eh, insinuando cosas indecorosas a las niñas. And there is always uh, drunk people outside all the time insinuated uh, bad things to, to the girls. Incluso eh, esas personas que están ahí cuando las sacan del bar these people that are taken out of the bar, they just don't leave the area. They remain there and they do their personal needs in the area. También, eh, personas, mujeres que trabajan dentro de la barra, están afuera con los hombres. Also, women who work inside the bar are with the men outside. Mm. O sea, para mí como mujer, Ay, no me da pena decir lo que, lo que pasa fuera de la barra porque son cosas indecorosas. I mean, I personally, I, as a woman, I feel embarrassed to mention what goes on, what happens outside the bar with these men and women. It's bad things. Prácticamente, eh, no estamos atacando a la bar, al dueño de la barra. We are not attacking, attacking to the owner of the bar. Simplemente queremos que actúen de otra, de la mejor manera. We simply want, we want them to act in, in the best manner. Que pongan más restricciones a las barras. We want more restrictions for the bar. Queremos más vigilancia de la policía hacia las barras. We want more uh, vi vigilance. Police patrolling the bars. The police to patrol the bar. Porque esto en la, el área de la French no es nada más la barra mi tierra. Hay más barras alrededor y licor que están perjudicando a las personas. Because it's not only the bar mi tierra. There are more bars and also more liquor stores that are hurting the, the area. Prácticamente no están dentro de la barra ni, ni dentro de la licor, sino fuera de los establecimientos. It's not really inside the liquor stores or the bars, it's outside establishments. Lo, lo que nosotros pedimos como residentes de esta área, as, a, as residents of that area, what we are asking is, es que haya más vigilancia y más restricciones para las barras. To patrol the area uh, more of security and las barras y, y en la, in y the bars decos. and in the liquor stores. Gracias. Buenas noches. Thank you. Good night. Hello, Charles Bergman, director of the Esperanza Project. I just wanted to add a couple of points of clarification to the testimony of the residents. One is uh, to uh, specify a recommendation made in the letter that you all received and is in those packets. Uh, we do believe that there are a number of things the police and city could do to improve the French Street area more patrolling in general, but we are here tonight because we believe, uh, as has happened at at least two other establishments in this city, that uh, an additional special condition on Mitia's license that they're required to hire at least one uniformed uh, off-duty, extra-duty police officer from New Brunswick in the peak uh, hours on the weekends. Uh, those are the times when the three most 
uh, the, those three incidents happened, those violent incidents, and obviously is when most activity is there. Uh, and residents feeling as if that was justified in, in several other establishments that don't have the same track record and have, didn't have inmate calls to service last night, but certainly in the case of Medieta, it's justified as well. And that, that doesn't mean Mr. Uh, Sivak Kumar and I have had several conversations, Mr. Gustis and I have been in communication. That doesn't mean uh, that we don't think other improvements in policing or in the area are needed as well. One part of a more comprehensive approach, but we do think that Mitieta specifically, um, residents feel Mitieta specifically is a problem spot that needs to take some responsibility by way of hiring police officers um, uh, during those peak hours uh, as an additional condition. Uh, and I'll just add, uh, we also work with a number of small business owners in the area. Um, and I just spoke with one yesterday who couldn't be here today, but has a restaurant within a stone's throw of Mitieta. Um, and just to say that it's not just residents that are concerned about this, this restaurant owner says when they close up at the end of the night, uh, he goes out of his way to avoid Mitieta when driving home, when driving away from, from his restaurant because at that point in the night there's so much activity that scares him around Mitieta, that's centered around Mitieta, that he tries to avoid it entirely. And he's trying to attract new customers to his restaurant as well, so you can imagine uh, uh, the effect that has. So um, again, I just wanted to add that, that point, uh, and we do hope that the, the council will, will consider this additional restriction even though it's not uh, specified in the Tavern Report. We've had conversations with uh, Detective DeGraw, Detective Hudson, uh, conversations with uh, City Attorney T.K. Shammy, so we can understand this process and the best way to present this, these concerns. And, and we hope that you'll take the residents and the additional business owners' concerns seriously and this recommendation seriously. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Gussis? Well, I'm going to save my remarks for the hearing itself. I do want to say one thing. I'm a New Brunswicker. I was born in 35 Jersey. Mm -hmm. Step up to the microphone. <clears throat> I said, I'm a New Brunswicker. I was born at 35 Jersey Avenue. For the first 18 years of my life, I lived on that corridor. I'm very familiar with that intersection. Handy Street, and there at that intersection, is one of the busiest intersections going. If you go to the Walgreens Shopping Center, you'll see the sign there. They have the problem with loitering also. There is, the property is built on the property line. There is no space for anyone to do anything. Mr. Sivu Kumar voluntarily accepted a condition where he has security in the place. He has cameras all over the place. The specific incidents, and specific, they're only speaking in generalities. Now, Esperanza Project, it's obvious Mr. Bergman has orchestrated their testimony tonight because when they weren't understood, he was able to correct them. So while they say that they are not targeting Mijera, they are targeting Mijera. And the fact is that that whole French Lee Carter, that intersection, is a problem. And the city has, has, I'd love to see it look like George Street, but I can tell you that the whole redevelopment of New Brunswick, nothing has been done for that corridor. So they should organize the business people who are the ones that have the most to lose. And they haven't done that. They've spoken to a few business people. My client was never approached until he got the notice to go to a meeting in May. So I don't know where all these people have been. And, and the bars do not end, the bars do not close at 6 o'clock. You have your weapons. There's no violations against Mr. Sivu Kumar that Mr. Sivu Kumar serves patrons past the closing hours of the bar. And I don't know what all these people are doing walking around at that hour anyway, but across the street, as you know, you have Sam's Chicken, and that has been a trouble spot with the police also. You have the tablet report. There are specific reports in it. If you see, if you read the reports in it, there, there are very few reports that talk about violence inside the place. They do talk about things that happen outside the place. They have not attributed them to inside the bar. There was one incident that one of the ladies testified to, and that was where there was somebody with a cutter who cut someone. Their security immediately moved in. It was their security who suffered the most stab wounds because he was trying to maintain order. Mitterrand knows if they have a problem they can't handle, they call the police. And they've always done that. And there's no reason why any more conditions should be placed on their license than they have. <coughs> They're going to keep the security that they have. And I don't know whether you're aware of it, but I want to make you aware of it. 
your PPA contract that you negotiated says in it that if they have a police officer there, whether it's for one hour or more, they have to pay them for four hours. So it comes out that they're spending almost $600 a night to have one officer there for certain for four hours. So they should have be, they should be allowed. There's going to be a condition to have private security there. If there's any testimony that their private security is, is ineffective, then that's something that should be called to their attention. The police officers who are there cannot tell you they may have met with these residents, but how many times have they met with the tavern owners? And it's not only Tierra that they have not met with. They didn't meet with any of them at all. They issued the tavern reports, and they issue them quarterly. You as the council, if a bar is a problem in one month or two months, don't you think that the police should go there and sit down with them and say, hey, what are we going to do about this? I don't think they should wait for these hearings and pounce on them if they really want to solve the problem. Now, Mr. Bergman did send me a letter, and I answered him, and I told him, they can't just resurrect themselves out of, out of nowhere. If they're really seriously interested in doing something to that Carter, Mr. Kumar is here, and he is ready to be a partner in what they're doing. But they didn't approach him in that matter. They sit there and tell you, well, we're not attacking Gutierrez. Well, you listen to them. What, are they attacking Gutierrez? Why? I mean, if you look at the other bars on that card, only one person mentioned the other bars in the letter to Mr. Bergman, and I sent you copies of it. That letter the mentioned nursery, the nursery rhyme letter. Pardon? We quoted the nursery rhyme or something. Yes, and, right. And so tonight, what did you listen? You listened to all these people talk about what Henny Penny told Chicken Little. You heard them talk about a survey. A survey. They didn't even tell how many people they surveyed. I they didn't even tell where these people Excuse were. Me. Please, please. So all I can tell you is. The, the condition that's on there, Mr. Sidhu Kumar is willing to live with. If they tell them that it's ineffect ineffective, then that's something for you to consider. But we have not heard that at all. That's all I have to say on the testimony. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Jamie. Uh, Mr. Council President, um, just to correct the record, Mr. Gus said when the hearing starts, the hearing did start. This yes, is the hearing on the hearing right, right now. Are you doing the hearing on PTR right now? This yes. is the oh, hearing. Okay. Well, then let me get my file. I didn't know that. I thought it was just to hear these people. Hold on one second. I'm locked out of my file. Oh. Is the door locked? Is it locked? provide a copy of the survey that he did because these people could be coming from anywhere there and they wouldn't know anything and there's no way to give any validity to his survey I'd be more than happy to provide a copy of the survey results to Mr. Gussis and the council not the results the questions asked yes and the people the who answered them and where they live sure yep and then we ask people where they're coming from if they are from New Brunswick if they live close by I'd be happy to do that Shane yes um, Officer DeGraw is here. He is the author of the tavern report. Um, as as uh, everyone is aware, the council obviously is aware, the tavern report is prepared on an annual basis and submitted to council uh, for its review in connection with 
the relicensure of liquor licensed establishments, uh, especially those with special conditions. Um, so at that particular uh, point in time, that initiates the renewal process. Um, the report um, I would submit as part of the record, Mr. Gusses has been, be, been supplied with a copy of, of the extensive report back on all the licensed establishments, um, I, I understand. Um, but I would just ask Mr. Uh, or Officer DeGraw to give an overview of the report's findings with respect to METIER. Sure, Officer. Yeah. Uh, with respect to METIER, the uh, tavern report utilized the computer aided dispatch and record system that we utilize the Brunswick Police Department to formulate the numbers, uh, as is explained in the tavern report that you all read. As far as METIER is concerned, uh, there were the source of 75 calls for service. I believe 35 of those were directly related to disorderly persons or disturbances. Seven of those were related to noise complaints. There are some complaints uh, referenced there of course, uh, quality of life violations, public urination, disorderly persons uh, outside of the establishment. Uh, as everybody has previously stated, the establishment is located in an incredibly busy intersection. Uh, there's a lot of pedestrian traffic, vehicle traffic, and I would say a portion, I couldn't speculate as to how much of the complaints related to the bar are in fact related to that, the volume of traffic in the area. Um, contrary to what was previously stated, we do have ongoing conversations with the owner of the establishment, the licensee, and I do in fact the quarterly reports, I do monitor these things quarterly. Uh, the licensee is always open to suggestion and willing to work with us. It's a continuation of the uh, conditions without any changes. Can I just ask uh, the officer a couple of questions? Uh, yes. Officer, with respect to the special condition um, regarding the hiring of either a uniform police officers in New Brunswick or from an outside municipality or uniform personnel from a licensed private security firm, which does METIER currently uh, employ? Currently, Meteor employs a licensed outside security firm. Okay, are they a licensed security firm, to your knowledge? To my knowledge, they are. Okay, they're not employees uh, with security shirts on, they're actually security company people? Correct, it's a company, they come, they, they run a marked vehicle, uh, they utilize an amber light, they have an activated night, uh, an effort to deter incidents outside, is a uniformed security officer. They do supplement him with additional security within the bar they hire themselves, the individuals who see wearing the security shirts. Are these individuals armed to your knowledge or no? To my knowledge they're not. Okay. But they have security uh, uniforms on, if you will? Correct. Okay. Um, Is there a difference yeah. between the security inside and the official ones outside the rest of all? I believe the uniformed Security is a licensed security company, or the interior security are simply employees of the bar tasked with providing security. I just Mr. Gusses, would, yeah. would that be true? Uh, Officer DeGore, with regards to the we sir. stand up, please? Yes. Pardon? Mr. Gusses. Please stand up, sir. Please, please, it's please. difficult to all papers. Eh? I know, I understand, sir. I'm sorry. But we can hear you better, that's all. Okay. Uh, question, Mr. Gus, is whether or not that's uh, true that the uh, security force is yes. inside and a and license outside. outside. And they also patrol outside. Is that the only way? Is that the same, the same licensed person inside and out? I'll ask Mr. Super Kumar. Are they licensed inside and out the same company? No. It's the outside of the uh, uh, security company I hired. And the inside? Inside people we hire kind of. He, the outside are uh, <coughs> licensed, and the inside are security people he hires. Right. But that would be the same way if there were police officers, it would be the same way, correct, Officer DeGore? Correct. You only do the outside, not the inside. Correct. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Chairman? Is right. that, I just have a question. Oh, sure. Is that um, a, in compliance with our right. stipulations and that's conditions? It is. It's consistent with the special conditions. I may have misspoke earlier. I think I was speaking to someone. Um, about the special conditions. I know it was a uniform personnel from a, from a company um, or their own employee. Um, my, that's been clarified now. The special conditions are either a licensed firm to provide security or a uniform police officer from New Brunswick or another municipality. So it's just outside of the perimeter. Right. No right. inside. Exactly. Those, those particular uh, officers are 
especially with New Brunswick police officers that are outside the premises to patrol the areas and the conditions in and about the licensed premises on the outside. Um, they only go inside if they're called to go inside due to a disturbance or an incident. Okay. Mr. President, the, uh, yes. the drunks that were talking about coming, are the bartenders aware of people that are being served that perhaps are over the legal limit or anything like that? Yes. All the bartenders are, they are trying. Even the camp process. Anybody have anything else? Officer Dubois, Officer with regard to the incidents that you talked about, the disorderly persons who <coughs> are those uh, complaints are, are they depicted in the reports that you attached to the tavern report from each era? Not all of the incidents in which uh, the, the computer aided dispatch system will generate a case number for require a police report. So while several may it may be there with a police report, there may also be several that do not include a police report or may not be a report attached. You include it in the report 10, 10 uh, you recu uh, re in the police, in the uh, tavern report, you included. 10 reports that had to do with Mijera. Did you personally review those reports? I did. Okay, so consequently, did, it, it, of all the 10, didn't some of them occur in the prior license year? As the front page of the, of the report will explain to you, due to the dates of the hearings, we check to get a full year's view of the establishment. We start uh, April 1st and continue through till uh, March 31st. Okay, so just so we reiterate for the record, the license year is July 1st, 2014 to, 2000, to, to uh, June 30th, 2015 that we're talking about. We just included that license year. Correct. It would be impossible for me to prepare the report in 24 hours to have it for the council. Really. Okay, but in, a, in an earlier uh, hearing, you testified that you were now doing quarterly reports. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so quarterly, you would have had one through March, correct? March of one. March of this year. It would have started in April of this year. But the prior one was done yearly, correct? So you started this year with a quarterly report from January 1st through March 31st of 2015. That is included in the tower report. Okay, but in discovery, we asked for that, and we did not get it. Why is that? Sorry, you discovered you asked for the quarterly report. We asked the for the report. quarterly report that you did for the first time in this license year. No, no request came to my office for a quarterly report. Well, the requests are made through the uh, the city attorney's office, and you were not you were not aware that one was made. I, I provided all the quarterly reports. With okay, so consequently, the reports that are here also include last year. They were testified to in last year's hearing, correct? The ones that were done before June 30th, 2014, that are part of your report, have to do with last year, correct? Correct. Okay, so consequently, with regard to these, some of the reports that you have that you, that you did specifically, there were reports here where somebody was arrested on a walk, correct? Correct. There was, there was also a report, when people call in, they call in with intersecting streets, correct? Correct. Meteor has been there how long? How long have you been a police officer? Six years. At least those six years, correct? Correct. Okay, so during that period of time, is it true as you call through all these reports and you really call through 1,600 some reports, correct? I called through quite a few reports. Through the CAD, through the CAD until correct. you determine what, it, what was there. Even though, even the reports that you've done, we've heard all these people testify tonight. Do you recall any of these specific incidents that they're talking about, the generalities of women's of the night committing sexual acts around the place? Specifically to that uh, type of call, I don't recall anything of that nature. Have any complaints that you've met with these people? I've not met with this group. We have a detective that handles them. Have they ever asked to meet with you? Uh, at one time, it was after this report had been completed, this year's final annual time report had been completed, and again, like I said, there's another detective who's did they tell you what they were doing that they wanted to meet with you? They did ask that I come to one of their meetings. And at that meeting, did you learn what their goal was? Again, I, another detective attends those meetings, and I, I did not attend. You did not attend the meeting. Now, Beach Air also has cameras, does it not? Yes, it does. 
and it has cameras both inside and outside, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And there were times when there were incidents that occurred on the street that nothing had to do with Mitiera. Did they not cooperate and provide the videos? That is correct. And did you attribute, after you reviewed any of those those videos, that any of the things that were complained of were once were of origin out of Mitiera itself? I'm sorry, no. If it was not related to the bar, I didn't attribute it to the bar. Uh, for a matter of fair reporting, I do include all the reports listed with the license licensee's address. However, you can see by reading the report that it's not necessarily related directly to the establishment. All right. Now, the the uh, security people there. Do your does your police unit keep in contact with the security people to register any complaints that the neighbors have had to them to be aware of? I have not contacted the security group. Okay. I have no further questions. If I can ask you also, Officer DeBraw, does the annual tariff report that Mr. Gus has received in discovery include the last quarter's report? Yes, it does. It has the same exact materials in it, correct? Yes, it does. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions? Okay, we'll I just, yeah. Can I have just one question? Um, none of the officers went with the community who was, you know, they were talking. If anybody could answer, um, well, how was the meeting? What was it came out from the person who represented uh, the Mitierra bar? How was the conversation? Did you all come out with some type of agreement or they did understand your concerns? Are you working together moving forward? Just, I just would like to hear what was the, the, the actual um, conclusion. En la reunión, si me puede dar un resumen de qué fue lo que sucedió en la reunión, si van a trabajar juntos y cómo en qué quedaron. Prácticamente nosotros lo invitamos a un meeting con nosotros de proyecto. We practically invited uh, to have a meeting with us, with us uh, for a project. El señor no se presentó, mandó representantes. The man didn't uh, present himself. He didn't go. He sent uh, representatives. Um, estuvimos haciéndole preguntas. We were, uh, we asked questions. Y ella solo lo que nos respondieron porque fueron dos, dos damas que trabajan ahí. There were two female working people that were there. Yeah. And they answered. Y lo que nos dijeron ellas, que ellas no podían dar ninguna, ninguna respuesta a nuestras preguntas porque no eran los dueños. And what they told, uh, they told us that they were not able to give us any answers because they were not the owners. Le sugerimos varias cosas como cambiar la puerta. We suggested several things such as to change the door. Porque la puerta se abre hacia afuera y le puede golpear a alguna persona. Because the door opens outside and it could hit uh, somebody. Y de horas de la madrugada la música se oye a dos cuadras hacia adelante. At the early uh, hours of the morning, the music, you can hear the music like two blocks far. Y ellas nos respondieron que no podían hacer nada porque ellos no eran los dueños. And they responded that they couldn't do anything because they were not the owners. Que eso le iban a decir al dueño cuando ellos eh, hablaran o conversaran. That they were going to inform the owner about this when they we're going to talk to them. Y le preguntamos también por qué habían tantos incidentes dentro de la bar. And we also asked why, why there were so many incidents inside the bar. Y ellas dijeron que ellas no estaban enteradas de lo que pasaba. And they say they were not aware what uh, happened inside. Una de ellas uh, nos dijeron que tenía 18 años trabajando para esa barra y wow. otra 10, 10 años. One of them said that she had been working for the bar for 18 years, and the other one had been working for 10 years. Y dijeron que no sabían nada de lo que pasaba ahí. And they said that they didn't know anything what happened there. Y nosotros le preguntamos por qué tantos incidentes con armas. We asked why, why there were so many incidents with arms. Ellas dijeron que no sabían nada. They said they didn't know anything about it. Se supone que si son trabajadores, saben lo que está pasando dentro. It's supposed that if they are workers, they are supposed to know what goes on inside. Solo le, le pedimos al dueño que él viniera a la reunión para poder ponernos de acuerdo en hacer cambios para, para su bien de él, de we su negocio. We just asked the owner to be present at the meetings 
and this is um, this was going to be for his own good, for his own business. Pero él no no asistió, mandó personas que no tenían nada que ver. But he didn't attend at the meeting. He sent people that had nothing to do with it. Thank you. Gracias. I just want to suggest that uh, moving forward, I'm pretty sure that, that it will be really to be with you and give all the conversation. Maybe it wasn't available for that they have just saying, but to continue, um, I would encourage continued communication and, and, and see what happens. I mean, it wasn't available, but he didn't want to make it. He probably was not available, and he said whoever he thought that was able to help out. It's just a suggestion moving forward. Gracias. Um, yo solo lo, lo que nosotros como proyecto y como miembros de la comunidad de esa área. Thank you. And as a member of the community uh, in that area and as a member of the project. Queremos que se mejoren las, las condiciones de su barra. Es para bien de él, no para, para el bien de toda la comunidad también. We want improvement of the bar, not only for him, but for the entire community. Gracias. Gracias. There's no further um, testimony or comment. We close the public hearing. I would like to close the public hearing and get a motion to go to the closed session. Uh, the, the purpose of the closed session. The purpose be, of the closed session is to discuss the conditions on the immediate air for right and the fact that it may very well result in a uh, appeal by way of litigation. So having okay. said that, I get a motion. Get a motion. motion. Second. Second. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. Why we're here, can I get a motion to go back into uh, open session? Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. <coughs> Give us a couple seconds. We're waiting for the uh, city attorney, Shammy. Now back into open session. You make a motion? Yes, we no, do. Yes. yes. Uh, for the purposes of the record, uh, for your closed session, the council discussed the testimony that is elicited at the time of the hearing, including the cross examination and direct testimony of Officer DeGraw regarding um, the tavern report, uh, the observations of members of the public, representatives of the Espinosa project, and um, the responses to questions regarding the current special conditions regarding security from a higher um, security firm. Um, it's my understanding that after um, that particular review and consultation with council, council uh, has a uh, motion which um, they would like to make which will become part of the renewal uh, resolution at the time of renewal. This license is not up for renewal this evening. Yes, I'd like, I'd like to make that motion uh, that we amend the conditions at the time of renewal to require um, the tavern to have off-duty police officers as security. Second. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. Yeah, for purposes of the record, uh, just to clarify the, the motion, um, I assume uh, 
Councilwoman Garlotti's motion was to uh, remove the <coughs> option of licensed private security um, on Friday and Saturday evenings from 9 p.m. to closing only and replace that with only off-duty uniform from the Brunswick police officers. Is that the nature of your motion? Today? That is the nature of my motion. <laughs> just want to clarify that. Okay, then if that's the council's motion, um, when the matter does come up uh, for renewal, that particular special condition uh, will be in the resolution of renewal for the council's vote at that time. Thank you. We'll now move to public hearing number two, the Gala Cafe and Restaurant. Mr. Shandy. With respect to this particular matter, um, tonight is the scheduled hearing for the Degala Cafe. Um, Mr. Gussis also represents the licensee in this regard. Um, just for purposes of background, a little history on this particular matter. As the council is aware, this particular matter um, has been um, the subject of ongoing litigation over the last two years regarding an appeal by the licensee of the special conditions imposed by this particular council. Um, I will advise you that um, Mr. Gustafs and I, quite frankly, along with his client, thought we would have a decision by this point in time uh, from the director of the ABC after um, the decision of the administrative law judge. But I recently received yesterday an order of extension from the director of the ABC extending the judge's decision until August 6th, um, which means that this particular uh, decision regarding the imposition of special conditions for the last two years probably will not even uh, come down until we're into this new license year, meaning all of that, uh, in effect, is moot for purposes of what we do here going forward. Um, but having said that, the tavern report submitted by Officer DeGraw um, does recommend um, the reimposition of the special conditions imposed by this council, the last license term. Um, I know that uh, Officer DeGraw again is here uh, willing to speak on that, and we will hear from him uh, for purposes of the record and to refresh your recollection as well as the benefit of the public. If I could read the special conditions, I will. Um, number one, the licensee shall employ extra duty New Brunswick police officers in accordance with procedures set forth in Ordinance 0 109903 as amended between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2.30 a.m on all Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings for purposes of maintaining order in and about the licensed premises. And two, all live and recorded music shall be turned off no later than 1 a.m. Friday and Saturday evenings and 11 p.m. on Sunday evenings. Thank you. Would anybody from the public like to speak on, on the Degala Cafe restrictions, conditions? Anybody from the public? Okay. Mr. Gustis, would you like to address the council on the Degala conditions? Yes. Or Wendy? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Jamie. I'm sorry. I don't want to cut Mr. Gustis off. If you, if you want to hear from Officer DeGraw first, and then Mr. Gustis, it doesn't matter. To, to me, if Mr. Gustis wants to go first, it's fine. No. I didn't know that he was going to call me. I didn't know he said he was, but just go ahead, Mr. I'd rather, Gustis. I'd rather have him speak first. Okay. Mr. Come on up there, uh, Detective. Can you tell us about the conditions and uh, what the police feel uh, should uh, moving forward? What would the, uh, your uh, recommendation is, please? Uh, I recommend the reposition of the conditions that the council would apply, which include the uh, time restraints of the music and the requirement of a extra duty to run the police officer at uh, peak hours, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Currently, they're required to hire an officer Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. The state ABC state the hours condition. Uh, in regards to the music on Fridays and Saturdays. They did allow it on Sunday, pending the outcome of the hearing of the state administrative law judge. Uh, at this time, the licensee does not open on Sundays after 10 p.m. Uh, in order to not have to pay for an extra duty officer for four hours. Uh, so traditionally, typically, we see the officers employed there on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, the establishment was a source of 52 calls for service this year. 18 were related to disturbances or disorderly persons, and I've 
believe it was 10, were directly related to noise from inside and around the establishment. Uh, each time we have an officer assigned to an establishment as a result of an imposition on a license, they're required to complete a memo to Detective DeBonis or myself in regards to the, the events they encountered during the course of their duty. Uh, while officers may interact with people, patrons, people on the street, uh, throughout the course of their duty, not each interaction would warrant a police report, uh, or arrest, charges, summons, any of that nature. So in order to document just what the officer is doing, attached to the report, to the type of report you all have seen, are those memos, uh, they detail incidents involving everything from quality of life violations, uh, sorely loud persons, groups of people fighting, uh, verbally arguing outside, fights inside the establishment. Uh, we did have an incident where a large fight was pushed outside from inside the establishment. Uh, the extra duty officer was actually attacked by one of the people involved and was injured while affecting the arrest of minor abrasions. Uh, we did have an incident, again, while an extra duty officer was employed and physically present in front of the bar, where another patron exited the bar and uh, drew a firearm while being involved in a fight uh, with somebody from inside the bar. He had come from the bar and was in possession of a firearm. As a result of the totality of the investigation and the ongoing continuation of violent incidents, as well as quality of life violations, I recommend the reimposition of the license of the uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Justice, the, the commentary I would like to make is this. When, when we're before you for a hearing, the officers who make the reports are not present to testify. When we appeal to the uh, ABC and we were before an administrative law judge, those officers are required to testify. So I just want to let you know that whatever you do tonight, and I understand this is a hearing on the, on the restrictions uh, and the special conditions. This is not a renewal hearing where you're going to reimpose them. But one thing that we're going to do if you do reimpose them is with regard to Sunday night where the director has given a special uh, condition that on Sunday nights they have to turn the music off at 11 o'clock. It is absolutely ludicrous that they should have to pay an officer for four hours for only being there one hour. So whatever you do at the renewal hearing, you should consider that on that night, you, if, you, if they're only going to, if you're only going to say they have to close at 11 o'clock, that you not require that condition on Sunday nights. So let them do what it is, 11 o'clock at night. I'm sure everyone's not going to bed at 11 o'clock at night. So it's unfair. So, the, so just yes. to get it straight, you're, you're asking that if they're only going to be open until 11 o'clock, that you would like us not to impose any restrictions because it's only until 10 o'clock and the restrictions. Right, but I, but I am going to appeal whatever you do that. Of course you are. Yes. I wouldn't right. expect anything less. Okay, so now, as, as uh, Mr. Shabby said, the director of the ABC, at the request of the administrative law judge, who, who has asked for additional time only because of his calendar load, has put us in a position where now we're in another license year spending more money on lawyers and more money on police officers because Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez, from the time he started with an officer, his cost was 30000 a year for the same hours. Last year, they were 84000 So it, get, it gets to a point where, like now on Mijera, you impose that instead of a private security person license that he had, that he have a police officer, you're talking about a financial burden that I don't even think you're considering. And I don't see why the PBA was able to get that condition in their PBA contracts to victimize well, it's the- not, it's, not, it's not in the PBA contract, it's in the contract, it's in the conditions of extra work duty. It's not in the PBA contract, per se. It is in the, in the uh, extra work duty agreement. Or it's not in the PBA agreement. Well, isn't the extra work agreement part of the PBA contract? No, not to my Well, mind. it was bargained for, wasn't it? <coughs> yes. So, so that's a that's an imposition that they that these people, the licensees, have to live with, and it's it's just unfair to do that. So, so now when the renewal comes, as you know, because of the backlog that they've had as a result of going online, the licenses of this year have been extended to September 18th. So when the renewal hearings occur on those, I'm just saying that instead of wasting everyone's time going over each of the reports to show how unfair they are, I'm going to tell you right now that we're not gonna put you to that and we will then appeal whatever you do at that point. But when you do it, if you do impose the one hour, we are going to then take and ask for a stay and we're gonna ask the director to reconsider that. So if you wanna put us to that expense, I'm just telling you right now, it's unfair that he should have to pay for 
four hours for one hour because of this. So I ask you to consider that. And that's all I want to say on the Tagalog. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Mr. Council President, members of council, in, in fairness to Mr. Gussis and, and for purposes of uh, explaining um, the director's decision, during the pendency of this last um, appeal, the director did um, reverse this council's decision to have the licensed establishment stop the music at 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. I should say on a Friday and Saturday nights. In other words, he allowed the music to go to 2 a.m. And my understanding, the licensed establishment did have music or entertainment until 2 a.m. However, he held in place the special condition of the 11, 11 p.m. Uh, cessation of music on Sunday nights. Um, and it's Mr. or Officer DeGrouse testimony that because they couldn't have the music on past 11, the bar could still open, stay open until 2 a.m. grant you, but just, just because they couldn't have music beyond 11 p.m. on Sunday, they decided to close because they didn't want to endure the financial hardship of having to pay an officer for four hours when perhaps he would only work one or two. So that's the nature, I think, of Mr. Gussis' objection. I'd also like to make one other comment. In yes, the sir. hearing, and we have transcripts for it, and Mr. Shami has it, Mr. Barker, who has been the most vocal person in this, on, on the night when this restriction was that they they had to close, they had to shut off the music at 11 o'clock, and my client opted to close before 11 o'clock, testified at that hearing that he was still hearing noises after 12 o'clock when, when Degala was closed. So I brought that to the director's attention, but because of the pending appeal, he didn't deal with it at that time, but he will be dealing with it. But if, but if you look at the reports, the tavern report, and, and for the first time, this past year, in this license year, for all the years that Mr. Rodriguez has paid thousands of escalating dollars to 84, there was never a report by any officer that he paid of what went on there. In fact, those officers testified that they were not asked to do reports before that, but now they're being asked only on the gala, not on any license place that they go to. And if you read those reports, they don't all say that anything happened there. They're the first bastion. When somebody calls the dispatcher, who should the dispatcher call? Call the officer who's there, who's getting paid. And that didn't happen for over 10 years. And so now Mr. Rodriguez is asking for relief. I don't think it's, it's unreasonable that he do that. And, and Mr. Shami can tell you that I provided him with all the transcripts and that Mr. Barker was an absolute liar. And you all accepted what he said. So that's why I'm asking you at this point in the proceedings, since it's carried on, that you could reconsider on that Sunday night having an officer for one hour. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. If that were the case, can we get something in writing that he would actually close by 11 p.m. on Sundays? Pardon? We'd be able to get something in writing that he would close by 11 p.m. on Sunday if we take away the officers on Sunday. Pending the appeal. Pending the appeal. Will you do that? If you because I'm telling right now, no problem because he left. Yeah, he would do that. Okay. Can I get a motion, please, to go into closed session to discuss the, the gala conditions? So moved. Second. Roll call. Council Member Anderson. Aye. Council Member Escobar. Yes. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council Member Barlati. Aye. Council President Egan. Yes. We are now back into open session. Can I get a vote, please? Yes. Council Member Anderson. Yes. Council Member Escobar. Yes. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Council Member Garlati. Aye. Council President Egan. Yes. Mr. Jamie. Yes. Minutes of the uh, closed session on the gala will reflect that council discussed the uh, testimony that was elicited by Officer DeGraw, the comments by Mr. Justice question and answers regarding um, conditions in and about the licensed premises, uh, their review of the uh, tavern report, and questions regarding the pending litigation. Uh, as a result of the uh, closed session, it's my understanding, uh, the 
council is prepared to make a motion to indicate what action they'll take regarding the imposition of special conditions at the time of the renewal. Yes, I have a motion, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Council President. Um, I would like to recommend that at the time of renewal that we amend the conditions specifically regarding Sunday evening, um, that uh, if the uh, tavern owner agrees to close the tavern at 11 p.m., that there would not be an extra duty police officer requirement. Did I capture that? I think you did. Can I get a second, please? Second. Well, well. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all under the gallery. Mr. Chairman, you're telling uh, number three, the, uh, you say you need one more time on that? Yeah, it's my understanding with respect to the, uh, the hearing on the disciplinary charges against the licensee um, uh, known as the uh, state of Stephen Gomez trading at the Palace Bar. Mr. Gustis also represents this particular licensee. Uh, it's my, my understanding that he and Ms. Gaten have been in discussions regarding potential resolution. He needs a little additional time to speak with his client. Um, who's here this evening. Uh, my suggestion would be uh, that the council uh, pass on that uh, matter at this time and move on to their regular business and then we can come back to that after consent. Thank you. Yeah. Recommendation approved. Okay. We have ordinances on second reading, 502. The ordinance to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title 16, Land Development Code. Would anybody from the public like to Comment on that particular ordinance, you have five minutes. Anybody on this particular ordinance? Yes, sir. Good evening, Charles Prattville in Brunswick. Uh, I, I know uh, it's been said that this is some relatively minor improvements. Uh, does it set forth any specific areas of the city, geographic areas, where there's going to be changes, or is it just uh, sort of general Mr. changes? It's, um, this isn't the zoning ordinance, this is the Essentially, what's known as the site plan and the subdivision ordinance. So it applies uh, citywide, does not affect uh, any of the uh, uses uh, in a particular area. It mainly deals with uh, when someone submits a site plan, what has to be in that site plan, and also deals with things such as uh, how the board conducts some of its policies. We're trying to make it uh, uh, coordinated with the board's own rules, and also deals with uh, the uh, escrow payments that are uh, paid to uh, pay uh, professional fees so that uh, the language in our ordinance tracks uh, better what is in the, uh, the state statute and uh, makes a few other cleanup uh, uh, amendments to the, uh, the ordinance. Thank you. Thanks. Can I ask what inspired these changes or what, what, uh, what was the this behind this? What, what, what inspired the changes? We're always vigilant in trying to make our ordinances better. Thanks. <laughs> so it was said that uh, this was to make the uh, ordinance in line with the planning board's own rules. Um, how how were those things already not in uh, in concert? What did, what was what was out of whack? Well, uh, Mr. Pradville may uh, recall uh, the, both of the boards adopted uh, uh, new sets of rules uh, in uh, January this year when they reorganized. So as part of that, we are going back and trying to make sure that both the ordinance and the board's rules are in um, uh, sync with each other and updating the, the ordinance uh, where needed, where there may have been some uh, legislative changes, I think, as we discussed at the, the planning board meeting. Um, the, the state, a year or so ago, passed a, a requirement for a recycling plan to be part of it, so we're updating that and, and so forth, just trying to get things uh, in sync. Okay, and does it, does it change the number of members on either the board, the number of alternates, or the number of regular members? No, still, still all the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Motion on the ordinance? Motion. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. We have resolutions 501 to 533, and we are holding 527. Would anybody from the public like to comment on any of the resolutions this evening? Good evening once again, Charles Pratteville. Uh, I'd like to ask about number 17, 517, uh, $330,000 uh, for Airbus Vesta 911 system. What specifically is this and uh, uh, why do we need it now? 
Somebody answer from the police department, Captain Miller? It's not great our 911 system. 911 system we have now is antiquated. Uh, the current system will no longer be able to be repaired with you know parts that I have all the specifics, but this is gonna bring us into you know the 20th century and have us up to speed with the new model. Thank you, Captain. So this, this will bring which century will this bring us into? <laughs> 21st century. 21st, okay. Just check. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> 25. Uh, Number 25, sir? Yeah, is that, I guess that's uh, been delayed? They're, they're going over right now, uh, Mr. Cotton. We're going to have that hearing in a little bit. Okay, could somebody just explain to me what the, what the nature of the charges are? What, what if, this is all about? For the sake of time, do you want to just wait till we do the hearing? Because we're going to bring up this stuff. He's just going to say the same thing twice. But we're going to be holding that Go ahead. the consent agenda, and then we'll adopt it, um, assuming Mr. Gustafson and Ms. Gaten are not through with their discussions by the time we vote. We'll vote on it separate. But yeah, we're not going to vote on it, sir, if they're not done. We're not going to, we're going to take it out of our resolution vote. Okay. Just as an overview, though, of purposes. Go ahead, please, Mr. Shannon. There's 21 administrative charges against the licensee. Charges sound in, in uh, violations of Title 33 as well as New Jersey Administrative Code Title 13. They deal with everything from um, keeping proper uh, paperwork and reports in order for a licensed establishment uh, to operating an establishment as a nuisance uh, and not having the, uh, uh, the proper um, uh, filings with the city clerk's office. So there's a whole array of different types of charges um, that this particular licensee is, is facing. Mr. Crabble wants a copy sometime. I can certainly, uh, the clerk actually has them on file. You guys can have lunch? You can give it to him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> look like very good lunch uh, conversation. I got you. Uh, All right, Mr. Crabble. Okay, so just uh, when it says disposition of charges, what's the disposition? Would be some type of settlement where some of the charges will be dismissed and others won't? Uh, what's the nature of a settlement, that would be, that would be a, an accurate statement. But if we don't have a settlement, there's a full hearing, then it would be up to the county to decide the disposition of which charges uh, there are facts that support a finding a violation and which charges there are no facts that support that finding. Okay. Um, the next one is uh, 26, person-to-person uh, -person transfer. Can you tell me what this is about? A restaurant or Mr. Reese, can you help us with that? Yes. Uh, Thank you. This is the license that was uh, formerly located on Somerset Street at uh, McCormick's Irish Pub. Um, they closed it. Uh, the license is inactive as a pocket license, and as a pocket license, it has been sold to the gentleman purchasing it. Uh, and the purchase price is fifty thousand uh, dollars. The license is not active. Uh, when he uh, want, when he finds a location, there will be a place to place transfer. Uh, but no location has been found at this time. Thank you, Mr. Teresa. <coughs> Thank you very much for the thorough answer. Um, I'd like to ask about the new water director. Is that, is that being voted on today? It is, sir. Great. Have you had the opportunity to meet the new water director? I have. Great. Is, is he here tonight? He is. Could you please stand up, Mr. Lavenberg? Please say your name for everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Lavenberg. Thank you. Congratulations on your appointment. I appreciate Best it. Good luck to you. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. Uh, I guess I just want to ask, uh, you know, what's the, what's the status of the prior water director? Is he still on the payroll? Mr. Lockman, please. Um, if he's still sus suspended without pay, you know, we, I thought we had this conversation about whether he's on the payroll or not. He is not. He has suffered a <coughs> year and a half's worth of lost wages. But talk about the, the, talk about the director. The director. Not, not, not a work. Not a work. The director. Right, yeah, I, he was anticipating my next question. Yes. Okay, so I answered that one. Okay. I'm sorry, would you ask the first question once again? I'll try is not the, to overreact. The former water director still on the payroll. That was demoted. 
The um, former water utility director is still employed as the water treatment plant superintendent. Excuse me. Thank you. And I already kind of got the answer, but the, 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 Mr. O'Rourke is still suspended without pay and still pending an administrative hearing and none has been scheduled? That's, that's correct, sir. Okay. When is it going to be scheduled? Any idea when it's going to be scheduled, sir? And how the banks as a request of his lawyer to do his... The, uh, the attorneys, his right. attorney's holding it up, sir. He's, he's, had, he's requesting that, you know, you know, these attorneys are... Okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, that doesn't uh, make it any better. That okay, well, the the water well, he's not getting, he's not on the job. He's not getting paid. So I mean, I don't know how it's hurting us. Well, I think it's uh, concerning that he hasn't lost his job yet. You know, when when you talk about now Mr. going Powell, on two it's years, just, it's just a it's just a, a, a legal procedure that we all that people go through. Sometimes it takes long. Sometimes it takes shorter time. I mean, that's just the way. I'm understanding it. Am I understanding it? He's, he's entitled to a hearing. He's asked for one, and the attorney has asked that it be held in abeyance until uh, these issues with the state have cleared up. Um, we've accepted that. Okay. He does remain suspended without pay on. Okay. okay. And as I pointed out in a prior meeting, the issues with the state have been cleared up. They have. He has paid a fine and admitted guilt and been his license to do that type of job is suspended for five years. So what is the holdup? I mean, yes, you're right. Sometimes it takes a while, sometimes it doesn't. But that's a function of how hard you're working to get this person out of the administration. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? I don't think Mr. Cradwell represents Mr. O'Gore, but I've been personally dealing with the attorney who does. And I listen to the attorney who tells me uh, to the contrary. And his request to have the matter held in obeyance is something that we've honored and we have to honor. Okay. And whether Mr. Cradiville is getting other information, that's his business. But I will tell you that the city law department is working as expeditiously as possible to wind that matter down. Thank you. Mr. Cradiville? Okay. I, I somehow doubt that because uh, if you like, I'll provide the, the evidence from the state government that shows the matter has been resolved. Um, I, I wouldn't trust the lawyer for this person whose who's crime that they've now uh, admitted to the state that they were, were a party to was lying, was falsifying records and making it uh, so that the state government, the federal government, and the public was deceived about the quality of their water. And on seven different occasions when we were supposed to be boiling our water before drinking it or, or using it, feeding it to our families or pets, uh, that we were lied to and we were told the water was, uh, was, was did not need to be boiled. Um, and that is a very serious matter and I still take it seriously even though it's almost two years after this all came out in the public. And I think that uh, we deserve better as uh, public officials. You should be just as angry about it as we are. And uh, I don't understand why this person is still uh, officially on the uh, list of employees for the city. Um, there's no excuse, and I hope that uh, that uh, anyone else who was a part of that is uh, investigated and, and uh, taken out of the city government. Um, I, it just seems, it strikes me that there's not enough investigating going on. We're taking people at their word, like the lawyer for the guy who admitted he falsified the records and endangered the public health. Um, that's just wrong. Uh, did, do, you, do you disagree? I told you before that I'm going on the advice of our city attorney who said what he just said about they granted the stay because their lawyer told them that it's not all said with the state. So that's what I'm going on the advice on. Okay? Yeah, can I just ask? Right, what's that? Uh, can I just ask who's, who is the other lawyer that's saying this? I'm not going to read into this with Mr. Okay. You can so, so, Mr. Shannon, just to be clear, is uh, saying that you're, you're not going to move fo forward with a hearing uh, against this person. That's not what he said. Because that's not what he said. We say that the city's not ready to do so at this point. Uh, no, he said the city granted the attorney for the defendant. What was the term, Mr. Shammy? I'm sorry that you used banks. Mr. Crabble has to understand certain people 
who are accused of certain things that certain constitutional rights that need to be protected. And, and a lawyer who represents someone who may be in that situation will look to make sure their client is protected. And having said that, I'm not going to say any more. Okay. I think Mr. Crowder has got All right, Mr. Crowder, let's move on, please. So is one of those constitutional rights the right to have a secret lawyer who no one knows their name and it's not disclosed to the public? It's not a secret it's lawyer. What's her name? His or her it's, name? It's, you, you want to get the name, Mr. Shandy? Mr. Metz's office. Mr. Metz's office. Okay. I'm sorry. Metz. Metz. Thank you. Thank you. And Your time's up, Mr. Crowder. Well, go that ahead. took me a while to get that last. I have one more question. Go Just ahead. One more. I'll be quick. Please. In, uh, in the honor of Fourth of July. What, what the next the next item is the per um, thing. Are there any additional or, or uh, subtracted conditions as opposed to what's the status quo there? At the last meeting, I urged you to consider extra special conditions for this place. Is this is that part of the which place are we talking about? Uh, per lane. Same special conditions are proposed to be adopted that have been in place and that were sanctioned actually by the state ABC when they were first uh, put in place several years ago as contained in Resolution 32. Okay, uh, I just will repeat what I said last time that uh, this establishment is represented by uh, an attorney who did not think it was important enough to come to the hearing on it, did not think it was important enough to come here tonight, uh, and as I pointed out, was a, a, a former New Brunswick police director who was indicted and uh, removed from office in disgrace. And um, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, take the lawyer's word for it. I think you should, uh, you should consider special conditions for that place. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Anybody else on the resolutions this evening? On the resolutions. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna move the resolution. We're gonna hold 527 and we're gonna hold 532. I'm sorry, no, 525. 525. I'm sorry. Right, just because this gate is still not ready for us to yes. read that particular yeah. resolution, we'll, we'll adopt that one separately. Thank you. Councilmember Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Escobar. Yes. Council Vice President Fleming. Yes. Councilmember Garlotti. Aye. Council President Egan. Yes. Um, I think if they were ready, they'd be out here, quite frankly. You know, check for, I'll check. Please check. So you have to take your public comment for us. Okay, they're not ready. Sorry. Not ready? Okay, we'll move into the public comment of the meeting. Please, if anybody would like to address the council, you have five minutes to come address the council, please. Hi, yes, yes, Danielle Moore, 188 Welker Street. Well, first I would like to start off thanking the New Brunswick Fire Department for upgrading the security systems with the new black box so it's much safer and easier to get through complexes that have security codes. I will thank them for taking the time, going to the senior citizens, building apartment complexes, making it safer and easier to get in without damage. That's where I also like to thank the city for uh, taking action where maybe I say the city took action that I was serious, that I'm serious about when I say something dangerous, where the, the water department did respond the next morning to fix the hydrant and then the parking authority or traffic where they did come out and put the, the sticks to block the cars from parking on the corner where it makes a blind zone for the crossing guards. I will thank you for that, but what I'm, I'm here to really speak out on the situation with uh, Livingston Avenue and Comstock. That's uh, very dangerous, and I hope you do respond with less than 24 hours uh, due to where I mentioned to you about the pothole in the, in the walkway where no one really responds. I called the next day where they told me, okay, they were going to fix it Friday, but then I don't know, is the city responsible for fixing that or is the county? Then that's when that, a couple of days they came by and put something, but wow, now that you see, it's worse than it was before. This is much deeper where a child fell there. So like I said, I hope you take action with this soon as possible. To, to show it, where it was repaired, but repaired the wrong, the not, not strong enough material. If you see the kids where they're walking for summer school, 
to go to school in a walkway. The, the pothole is very deep. And like I said, I hope the city will take action, or believe me, I got word that I can call Channel 2 News to have this done immediately. Like I said, I'm not talking about something, a little hole. So I, I, like I said, have you been taking? Yeah, you have to say something to regard to that? Oh, the hole she's big enough. It's a gate box where you cut the water off from one side, main to the other. We did go out the next day. We didn't fix one, we fixed two. The stuff that I used that the repair them holes is not hot, it cold. When the rain or get hot, when the car run over it, it will knock it out. But it will, that we did fix them two gates, uh -huh. but by the rain and the car run over, it do comes out. I didn't know this tomorrow morning. I will go out there and put some more stuff around the cap. So I do the best I can with it until I get the permanent patch. Nothing against you, Mr. Weir. I was told that it was county property where the county was, was to take care of it when I had questioned the department where they said that. Is the county, yeah. where you, yes, Mr. Lock. Livingston Avenue is county jurisdiction. It is a county road, but we consider that our obligation to patch around one of our valves. And Mr. Weaver will address it. So tomorrow. we'll be here tomorrow morning Once again. Within well, 24 I, okay, hours. Okay, I, I, I do to where I don't have to keep coming at you with that. I hope it's a we different type of material. No, no, I'm not. I know Mr. Weaver does his job. Believe me, I, I know, know him for so many years. I know he does his job. But I'm just saying maybe better materials to, uh, to make it a little safer for the kids there. Okay. Uh, I know some of you think that I could what, walk around maybe New Brunswick just to what, maybe inspect things. No, I, I walk around New Brunswick for therapy for my back. If I was really inspecting things to come against you, what, I would be taking pictures of every block of your property coming down with actions. We don't take any more. Well, like I said, I'm not saying any names, but believe me, yes. So like I said, I hope hope to see, I know you've been taking me serious. Another thing that I wanted to say, I, it's good to see that you have a lot of new crossing guards, but I know a lot of young, they're young ones, if you can please give them the word, no, no cell phone, no texting, even if you have earpiece, no talking on the phone. Okay, if you, if you see anybody doing that, please let us know. And we'll well, well I, I'm phone taking, phone. I'm, I'm letting you know now, like I said, you just hired a lot of young ones. We're gonna it's go from the inspector to the sweeper. Well, if it's, if, uh, like, I, like I said, if it's squealer or, or whatever. No, no, please let us know if that's happening. If, if I see something that's unsafe to make someone get hurt, believe me. Absolutely. If you're a family member or whatever, I will still speak up to make it better. Absolutely. And then far as with the teachers parking. Right, that, uh, yes. Can you just ask the police to remind the crossing guards? Yes. Captain Miller, can you please remind the crossing guards of every charge with no cell phone? Thank you so much, sir. Yes. And then for the uh, far as the teachers parking uh, when school uh, does come back, due to where the area of the school that's residential parking, maybe uh, if you can give them some type of sticker where they won't get tickets parking in, in, in the area over there. And then okay, due to where you have street cleaning rules, then what do you expect the teacher to come out and move their car when it's time to do street street cleaning? So is it somehow you can give the teachers a special sticker or something so they don't get tickets? Okay, we'll take a look at that. I know that they did start for us, whereas uh, te some teachers were parking in the adult learning center and the, they would get picked up by the school bus and brought over to the school. But yes, that's been brought to my attention with, with uh, I, I know it was mentioned before, but yes, it's residential parking. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Monroe. Thank you. More. I'm sorry. Good evening, members of the council. Uh, I just want to start with an easy one. I want your uh, reaction. Governor Christie is running for president. Are you going to support him? Do you think he'll be a good president? Well, Mr. Pratt, little buddy, this is not the venue for that. You think Talk about the affairs of our country and, 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 and our, our state governor. Deciding to run for president and not resigning in his office here. Sir, do you do you support the governor? Mr. Crowder, I'm a lifelong Democrat. Okay. I'm gonna say no. Alright, and I'd just like to point out that because you don't have someone here to keep the time, uh, you put the city clerk in an uh, inappropriate position here where he's he obviously has work he needs Hold to on. do writing things who, down. Who decided that? Who decided he was in an inappropriate position? You? Yeah, I'm, I'm deciding. Are you speaking for him? 
I'm saying that oh, my time's Teresa, ticking away while you're talking, sir. Mr. Teresi, are you in an inappropriate position at this time? I'm quite comfortable at this time. Thank you. Speak on your own feelings, Mr. Cradwell, not anybody else's. Okay. I'd like to point out my time should not be ticking while you're speaking. Mr. Cradwell, I'm, I'm going to be as lenient as I can, buddy. I'm trying to get a win on everybody here, okay? Okay, please. So, Come on. Please. Ask some important questions. Get to some stuff here where we can have a conversation or we can listen to you. Let, 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 let's, not, let, let's not start off negative. Please. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, I, try, I try to start off with an easy one. Yeah. I figured you'd knock it out of the park. I, I said, I, I gave you my answer. Okay. Let, well, Democrat, I will not be supporting Chris Christie because this is not the main thing to talk about that. Okay. Okay. Ask me um, that after the meeting. Sure thing. Uh, so, after next year's meeting. <laughs> so I, I do want to just say I have great respect for the city clerk and I want to thank him and his office for uh, getting me a lot of documents that I've been waiting for for a long time and I, and I really appreciate the work they do and uh, I just, uh, yeah, I want to stick up for them when I can. So um, let's get down to it. Uh, Mr. Andrew Ferrazzoli worked for the city. He was the motor pool supervisor for the police. He was uh, caught, uh, you heard, uh, using the police cars to go buy drugs in Franklin Township. And uh, I just want to ask, before he was hired, did anyone look at his criminal record? I, have no, I, I, I did not, sir. I, did, is there I, I, I don't recall. I, I don't recall. This is several it, years ago? Yes, it is. I don't have his file before me. Okay. Well, if you would have looked at his criminal record, you would have seen um, some things that might have caused you not to hire. Can you tell me, did you check his driving record before he was hired? Mr. Lockton, I don't recall. Okay. Uh, did, you hire, did you interview any other candidates, or was he the only candidate for the job? Uh, I, I, I personally don't know that answer. Uh, Mr. Lockton, did you know that answer? At that time? My recollection is that he was the um, recommend, recommended hire by the police director at that time. I don't, that might have been. Joe Catneys, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I, I don't, uh, I don't recall looking at his uh, driving record at that time. Right. So, or that I, I don't know. I don't know if the the PD interviewed anyone else. To be honest with you. Okay. So the the police director, or I think maybe at the time he was the former police director, uh, he uh, recommended that you hire someone with a criminal record. Is what happened. He recommended that we hire Andrew Farazzoli, according, according to Mr. Lockman. Okay. Um, it's concerning. Uh, so, anyway, somebody came in to replace him, Scott Banner. Can you tell me, did anybody check his criminal record? What's his name? Scott Banner, Sr. And he, and he worked for the motor pool in the police He, he took over for Mr. Farazzoli, okay. is my understanding, if I'm incorrect. Does anybody Mr. know that answer? I, I do not. Captain Miller? I didn't hire him. Okay, so we'll try to so, get these. We'll try to get these answers if you're entitled to get the answers, Mr. Brown. Great. So, so just to be clear, that officers, or I'm sorry, not officers, but civilian employees of the police, are not automatically have a criminal record check. They're, we can't be certain whether this person had his record checked or not. I don't know if he did or did not. I, I don't know at this time, sir. Okay. Was his driving record checked? I'm sure we don't know that answer either. I, I would say no. So someone who's being hired to be in charge of all the police cars. Driving record, criminal record, might not have been checked. After the last guy got caught bringing the police cars to Franklin to buy drugs. That's what you're I, 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 I don't know the answer, Mr. Cradwell. We'll find out for you if his driving record was checked. Okay. Because uh, I know now the city is test, uh, uh, checking the driving records of people who uh, get take-home vehicles. Can you tell me the new water director, is he going to get a take-home vehicle? He is not. He is not. Okay, so his driving record not not checked. Uh, but uh, the previous water director did get a take home vehicle, and his driving record was checked, right? That is correct. That is correct, sir. Okay, so if we're checking the water director's driving record before we give him a take home vehicle, why aren't we checking the motor pool supervisor's driving record? The person going to be in charge of dozens of police cars. Does that make any sense? It does make sense. And I don't know the answer, and we'll try to find out. Makes sense. Okay, so now uh, Mr. Banyer was doing such a good job, you said, that we created a new title for him. I said that? Yeah. 
right. You're not that good at recording, so I don't know how how how, how, how right you are. So go ahead. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll I told be, you I had nothing to do with that. I'll be honest. I watched the video of you saying yeah, it. So okay. so you know maybe. I'll be you're, honest. You're not that good of a reporter. So okay, ahead. you can attack me so all you want. You're attacking but, me. So you're telling me that 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 I said that I hired that I was involved in the hiring of Tony Barber. That's not true. I, mean, I didn't even mention his name yet. Well, that's that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, Scott Bannon. You said the guy's doing such a good job of creating a title for him. And that's what I you said was some under questioning about the ordinance to create the title. I did not say that. I, 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 I did not say that. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Crowd. Okay, well, you can watch the video later. But, okay. uh, but so, Mr. Bannon, a new title was created for him. Um, and uh, then. Uh, about two years later, a man named Anthony Barber, who I know you, you know, uh, he was hired to the former job, which used to be called office supervisor. And at the last meeting, it was said that it's not a civil service position. Um, I believe you said that. I believe I said that at the last meeting. But since then, it's come to my attention that it's, that it's not a civil service position. Uh, have, have you heard it? Have you heard otherwise? It's not a civil service position. I, I believe that it is a civil service position. I have not heard otherwise. And I only, if I said something, I'm only echoing what Mr. Lachlan said. I, I believe it is a civil service job. So it has a civil service title. Okay. okay. So when Mr. Banner was hired to that position, was there a test that was done? I don't know. Mr. I don't Brown. recall. We don't know. Could you ask Ms. Bradshaw? I've provided a document to her that shows that there was a test. Ms. Bradshaw? Um, Charlie provided me. I'll stand up. Uh, Charlie did send me some documents earlier this week uh, regarding Mr. Banyer and asking you about civil service. I do have them in my email. Um, I don't have a clear answer for you right now. Otherwise, I would have given it to you. Okay. It's my understanding that Mr. Banyer was found to be ineligible for the job because he's not a city resident. Um, so the results of the test were thrown out, and the city was forced to uh, pay an expense to the state government for doing the test. Does that sound familiar? Is that what happened? It doesn't sound familiar to me. I, I don't know anything. Does anybody know that answer? <coughs> Captain Miller? I do not. Can you give us a little, maybe something in writing or something maybe we can did. try to answer? It. Did. I gave it to the mayor's office, Jennifer. And and so I guess I, I have to ask the same questions now about Tony Barber. Did you check his criminal record before he was hired? This, this hiring happened uh, very recently. May 18th was his first I, I don't order um, police background checks. I don't have the authority to do that. So I, I don't know if the PD did, did or did not. He was a retired police officer from Trenton. Um, I, I, I got to think there's some knowledge of his background. Um, but I don't have the authority to order background checks, and therefore I don't ask for them. Thank you. Was his driving record checked? Excuse me? Was his driving record checked? I believe so. I'd have to double check. Okay. Um, and so that review of the driving record, that would of course include uh, situations where uh, notices of tort claim or lawsuits were filed against the city because of his driving uh, of city vehicles. The city aware of any instances like that where the city's had claims made that, that people have been uh, uh, you know, struck by vehicles driven by Anthony Barber? Anybody no, answer that? I'm not aware of that. Not aware of that, sir. Okay. I'm not aware of that. Okay. So uh, there's at least two situations where Mr. Barber uh, was involved in, in traffic accidents while he was a police officer for the city of New Brunswick. And uh, so far, the business administrator and the police captain is here tonight to tell us that they know of no accidents involving Mr. Barber. Um, how could the driving record have been checked if they're not aware of, of these accidents? Well, no, I don't think anybody confirmed whether his driving record was checked. And I mean, if he had an accident with his vehicle, I mean, accidents happen. I don't know. Was, oh, was, was it? Uh, I don't know why anybody doesn't know the answer or what, what you're trying to get to. Well, I'm saying we shouldn't hire someone to run uh, the entire fleet of police vehicles and be in charge of them 
um, if they have a poor driving record. And I don't think that necessarily that's the case, but I'm asking if anybody even bothered to check. And I'm very concerned that no one in the room has. The police director should be here. He's hiring his friends behind your back and not, not, ad not advertising the position publicly, not abiding by the civil service rules and having a test and putting the most qualified person in the position, but repeatedly what we're seeing is people are hired without going through the proper process, without having their backgrounds checked, and put into positions of power in the police department at the recommendation of police directors who you've got to wonder what they're thinking. Appointing someone to a position like that with the record that Mr. Ferrazzoli had uh, is, is nothing short of incompetent. It's, it's dangerous to put people in those positions where they are in charge of police cars and you're, you don't even know their record before you hire them. You didn't even know they were hired until I brought it to people's attention. That's ridiculous. You need to be more involved and the administration needs to be more involved in the hires that the police make. And Director Caputo should be here at every meeting. There is no excuse. Previous directors have been here. I have not been given a satisfactory explanation of why the police director does not think it's important enough to come to these meetings. Uh, I think he's left you all hanging out to dry. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Pickett. Good question. Are those those uh, golden nuggets like with the brown chocolate thing? Yeah. Do you need one? Uh, if it's that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. No, no, no. You don't talk about the round ones, right? The chocolate. That's good. That's it. 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 That's the police officers to you know make sure that the young uh, people who are crossing the children, you know, make sure that they are not only cell phones and texting. It's important, um, but we got to figure out a way to get the police off their cell phones by texting too. So who's going to be first? You know? <laughs> both, I mean, both parties. Like you know, that's probably why they didn't know, because there's always an officer on Sanford and Livingston. So. If someone's on his cell phone texting or whatever, he probably should have noticed it. Probably it's because he was on his. But um, I also want to uh, address the new water director. Uh, Legdenberg? Levenberg. Okay. Um, just hope that he doesn't make the same mistake that the previous water director made. Um, you know, and unfortunately, if you do make the same mistake, you'll still be employed. So it's no big deal. And uh, I'm going to address Mr. Chairman. To the chair, please. To the chair. Yes, sir. It's an historical day today. I know it's 4th of July coming. Nah, we're yeah. talking about the second. Oh, you, you got me stumped again. I was thinking you were asking about the 4th of July, Independence uh, Day. So you said he's standing in the summer school. Huh? You said standing in the summer school. Yeah, I am. <laughs> today, today, July the 2nd. Today's, today's the first. Today's the first? Today's yeah. the first. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. See, you know it is. I'm so tired or whatever. So I'll give you all right. Well, tomorrow. Give me a pass on that. No, tomorrow, no, tomorrow's a historical day. So I'll give you a day to get do some research. Go ahead. Research Denmark Vest. Denmark Vest. Denmark Vest. Oh, research on Denmark Vest. Uh, he was a, he was a uh, revolutionary. If you read Church him, he's one of my role models. You can, you kind of get a better understanding of who I am as a person. Um, and uh, he was actually a revolutionary who uh, started one of the biggest slave revolts that never took place, but had about four thousand uh, slave members ready to you know overthrow slavery and oppression. And um, it's tipped off. Normally, is how it happens. He get t he got tipped off, but. Um, he was also the founder of that uh, Mother Emanuel Church, the Amy Church that was shot up. Oh, really? Yeah, he was the founder of the Amy Church, so there's a lot of historical, you know, it wasn't just a guy, you know, Dylan Roof didn't just go to any church, and, you know what I mean? And um, he was hung on the July 2nd. So, um, you know, there's a lot of historical um, 
There's a lot of history behind that church, Amy Church. It wasn't just a, you know, so I'll, I'll keep giving it to you. Peace, five pieces, all right? Um, <laughs> and, uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to be short because it is 4th of July. You guys, man, you, you burnt me out with these meetings, man. Like, uh, killed me, for real. I just want to end on this note. I'm out of here. I just want to end on this note. I got a phone call from a person about uh, Play Safe started a few days ago, right? If I'm not mistaken. Two days. Two days ago, right? Yeah, and then Joyce came apart. I uh, found that there's no running water for the children. There's no, there's no running water. Uh, no water. The water fountains aren't working. Water fountains not working. We're at Joyce Come Apart. Joyce Come Apart. Please, uh, let's go. Someone take a look at that, please. Absolutely. And also, one more thing, too, um, the children are there at 4 o'clock, but the bathrooms are being closed between 2 and 2.30. So, you know what I mean? We're good. I mean, that's, I mean when 2.30 hits, they close the bathroom, so they can put the kids there an hour and a half after. So, I don't know if somebody can. Can we, can we, serve, can we leave the bathrooms up until 4 o'clock at George Cumber Park? Because they're actually being closed at 3 o'clock. We are talking with the Parks Department about keeping them open until 4. Okay, if you do that, that'd be great. Thank you. Have a great 4th of July, Lieutenant. Amen. Hey, it's fireworks. Be safe. Uh, be safe. Good. Hopefully, they'll be better than the ones that be let off in Boyd Park. Where? 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 Yeah, George Dawson, Hope of Wellman Place, Chair of the New Brunswick Historical Association. Uh, George Washington's uh, Fort de Wasse moved to the American mil uh, military, uh, which is Council Resolution number six. Uh, we hope to be a major test of a heritage tourism in New Brunswick. Uh, this was a pivotal revolutionary event. It was more than just a celebration, early celebration of the Fourth of July, but it was. Uh, to our way of thinking, uh, Washington's conviction that the, uh, uh, America was now winning the war for independence, that the performance uh, at the Plummet Battlefield was so accomplished that the uh, 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 American independence was almost guaranteed. And he was showing that by this, his, uh, his major salute to the American military in New Brunswick at the, uh, on the 4th of July, uh, 237 years ago. Uh, uh, and this, this event not only being uh, spectacular, uh, early celebration of the 4th of July, but also be educational. Uh, David Martin and myself will, will speak to a, a very knowledgeable the American Revolution, and this is this happened here, and uh, we hope people will learn something about the American Revolution by attending. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm great to have a happy 4th. Anybody else like to address the council at this time? Seeing none, we'd like to move into uh, number three of our public hearings. Mr. Shammy, yes. can you lead us along, please? Yes, Mr. Council President, members of Council, my understanding that uh, Ms. Gaden and Mr. Gusses, who represents uh, the licensing, have reached a uh, potential resolution of the charges against this particular licensee, which they would like to submit to the Council for the Council's uh, consideration and approval. Yes, sir. And uh, for the record, we are dealing with the matter of uh, Germania Busetta. Um, Busetta. Busetta. Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Gus. He will say it in Spanish, Mr. Gus. That's why he said Busetta. Busetta. He said it in Spanish. For many. <laughs> Administrator, CPA of the estate of Stephen Gomez, trading as the Palace Bar, liquor license number 1214-33. 019-005. Um, I'll ask uh, Ms. Gaden and Mr. Gus to take over from here. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shannon. Um, these charges stem out of an inspection that was uh, conducted by Detective Ryan DeGraw on March 12, 2015. And they include 21 separate charges, all uh, total aggregate into 542 days suspension. Prior to the hearing, Mr. Gustis and I discussed all of the charges, and the applicant has agreed to plead to seven of those charges for a total of a 180-day suspension. Okay. This, this license was transferred to Ms. Huset Yuseta? Huseta. You say to back in 2014, um, after 
the executor was no longer, um, I guess, authorized to be the, uh, the executor of the estate, and then she took over. So what we have agreed to do, as I said, she's going to uh, plead to seven of the charges, and the account numbers, by way of reference, is numbers one, number three, and we're amending number three to remove the language that has to do with omission of section 9.3 okay. regarding the outside persons to benefit from profits. And she's also pleading to number four, number six, number eight, number 16, and number 18. Again, for a total of 180 days suspension. Thank you. Mr. Gosses, anything? Yes, sir. Yes, it should be understood that her, what happened was when her former husband, they were divorced at the time, passed away in 2013, under his last will and testament, he, he appointed her to be the executive. She did not accept that qualification at the time, and her son, who was the alternate name of the will, Steve, then he became the, ex the executor of the will. Then, because he was removed as a result of an incarceration, uh, she accept, reluctantly accepted it. So she's here before you as a fiduciary, not in her individual uh, capacity, and she's addressing the charges that are there. Okay. Now, there are, in addition to this, there are, there are several other, which Ms. Gaden will put on the record, there are also several other parts to our agreement for the proof. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Gusses. Um, <clears throat> The applicant is also agreeing to um, make an application within the next 60 days to transfer the license from the estate of Stephen Gomez to a, another person, and that person has not been identified as yet. May I qualify that? She, she can only uh, be as a seller, the estate then would be the seller, to a third party. She'll submit the contract to the, to the, clerk. To the clerk. Okay. And the suspension will commence 10 days after the date of this resolution if she has not applied to the director of the ABC to convert to a monetary penalty, and uh, which this uh, we're asking the council not to object to. That is the plea. Anything else, Mr. Gosses? The 10 days should be 10 days from the day I receive a copy of the resolution because in my submission to the director of the ABC, I need to approve the resolution which also will say that the council does not object to the conversion to a monetary fund. That seems fair. Yes, Mr. Anderson. Uh, we were talking about the 180 day suspension, basically. Is that a suspension of just the liquor license or the whole place would be closed down? The whole place would be closed. Thank you. Anything else, anybody? Uh -huh. Mr. Shannon? If the council is inclined to uh, adopt this proposed resolution, um, I have a draft resolution that I'd like to read into the record and submit for the council's approval. Um, not on consent agenda, obviously it wasn't ready at that time, but you could vote on it. Okay. You ready? Mr. Council, does anybody have any objections? Ready. Anybody? Ready, Mr. Chairman. This is going to be resolution R-071525 by the Municipal Council. I think i put my glasses back on. Uh, whereas, a notice of charges has been filed against Germina Macetra, FKA Germina Gomez, Administrator CTA of the Estate of Stephen Gomez, trading as the Palace Bar, 181 Troop Avenue, the holder of Plenary Retail Consumption License Number 1214-33-019-005 in the City of New Brunswick dated May 12, 2015, which alleges violations of the New Jersey Administrative Code, NJAC 13-2-2.14, small a, at sec, and New Jersey Statutes, NJSA 33-1-25, at sec. Am I going too fast for you? Okay, whereas the City Council, by resolution R-071525, set July 1st, 2015 at 5.30 p.m. for hearing on said charges. And whereas on July 1, 2015 at 5.30 p.m., Germania Gomez, executor of the estate of Stephen Gomez,
demonstrating as the palace bar appeared with counsel George Gusses to respond to said charges. And whereas prior to the um, commencement of the hearing on said charges, the licensee has agreed to plead to counts one, three as amended in the record already, four, six, eight, 16, and 18 of the complaint against the licensee dated May 12, 2015. Whereas Assistant City Attorney Charlie Gayton has recommended that the uh, licensee in connection with the imposition uh, of sentence uh, be suspend, the license be suspended for a period of 180 days um, in connection with the plea of the violations of the count set forth here and above as contained in the May 12, 2015 charges. Um, whereas the council finds and determines that the appropriate penalty for a violation of the charges uh, to which the licensee is pleading guilty is a suspension of the liquor license for a period of 180 days. Uh, said suspension to commence uh, within 10 days after receipt of a certified resolution by the licensee's counsel, George Gusks. Um, whereas the um, licensee shall also make application to transfer the license within 60 days of the date herein to a third party um, yet to be uh, determined. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council um, of the City of New Brunswick that the charges against, uh, the plea to the charges against the licensee are hereby accepted and that the license of Germania Ucetra FKA Germania Gomez Administrator CTA of the estate of Stephen Gomez, trading as the Palace Bar, uh, is hereby suspended for a period of 180 days, said suspension of license to commence within 10 days after receipt of a certified um, resolution by licensee's uh, counsel, Mr. Gusses. Be it further resolved that certified copies of the resolution shall be sent by the city clerk to the licensee, police director, police officer, Ryan DeCraw, City Administrator and Mr. Gusses. I, uh, Thank you. Any yes, additions? Because I, I think it's ambiguous. If, if the application is made to the APC within 10 days for her to have this converted to a monetary penalty, the resolution should also say that the council does not object to it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's part of that. I didn't have that. I didn't write that in here. Okay. And that's one. N number two. If that, if the app, until the director rules on whether they will do it, give it, I don't think that this suspension should begin. She's got to show proof that we submitted it. And thereafter, it's up to, I can't control what the director of the ABC does. I don't know how prompt they are in doing that. But I don't want the suspension to start while we're waiting to pay the penalty and have it determined. My, my understanding of how this works, and Mr. Gustafson has been down this road um, many times as well, is that when he submits his application, to stay the imposition um, of the suspension so as to reduce the suspension to a monetary fine or, or suspension and a, and a monetary fine or some hybrid thereof, that the ABC um, director will issue an order to stay the imposition of the sentence. That happens pretty pretty quickly is my understanding. My concern is, is not putting a time frame in there is that we never have any closure to that particular penalty aspect. Uh, of the resolution. Um, Mr. Gusses thinks he wants more than 10 days. No, I'm not saying I want more than 10 days. I'm saying we submit within the 10 days. That is up to the director. Yeah. I'm not asking for more. He may not rule within the... He has so you, want, you don't want the suspension to start until you receive from the letter from the director. Right. And so if he issues a state, that resolves it. But I don't know that that will be the case because since the last time I did this, we have a new director. Do we have any problems with that? Well, I have never had problems with the past. Now, my, my understanding of the experience has been they do it rather quickly. Now, Mr. Gustus is concerned um, about that. I know the clerk, who is very much in tune to what the director does, um, will immediately be um, aware of your filing. And I would think that the clerk can, can easily just call Trenton and see what the action is or isn't. Judge, everybody's on voicemail. I don't know who they can get in Trenton or anywhere else.
Because we have tried to reach them. Sometimes it takes us over a day to just get the lady to answer the phone. So I don't know what the problem is. I, 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 I personally don't have any problem until you receive the judgment from them today. Mr. Shandy, do you, do you have a problem? Uh, I don't have a problem. You can imagine to say that uh, um, a suspension will not take effect until, um, until and unless um, directed by the, uh, the director of the ABC. I mean, if you're saying it's what true, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. Happen. So I, I don't have a problem with that. Mr. All right. All right. We'll, we'll, amend, amend, we'll amend the resolution to so reflect. We'll also amend the resolution to recite that the city council has no objection to the uh, licensee's application to the director of ABC to reduce a part or a portion of the, uh, the monetary fine uh, into a monetary fine from a suspension. But you have a question. Just, just for the lay people here, so it's possible that you could just say, pay a certain dollar amount and you don't have any suspension whatsoever. That's possible. Um, what happens is, is that the state, um, well, let me back up a minute, just so you know, for the new people here. This city council, under state statute and regulation, has no authority to impose a monetary penalty upon a liquor license establishment. Your only penalties are a suspension or revocation of a, of a liquor license. Um, the state, however, the director of the ABC, has the ability to reduce a suspension imposed by a local municipal body um, to a monetary fine. Uh, in total, in partial, um, what they look at is the nature and extent of the charges and how they assess a monetary fine is, is they actually get the books and records of the license establishment to find out how much money they would lose per day or per week um, and try to hit them in the pocketbook. Um, I suspect the state um, has their own formula on that. I'm not privy to that. But to answer your question, the answer is yes. It could be reduced totally to a monetary fine or a partial monetary, partial suspension. And then in the meantime, can we get their word that they will do the best they can while the place is still open? Well, that's, uh, I believe, the understanding between Ms. Gaten and Mr. Gussis, uh, because our liquor license uh, enforcement action will not cease just because we have this resolution today. Officer DeBrow is in the back of the room listening very intently, I'm sure. Well, I just want to tell you that, you, that the bar has always, even before, my client became the uh, administrator of the state, has had a licensed officer on the premises without it being a condition of the license. Okay? And is that still and that will continue. Yeah. That will continue. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, before those amendments. Those amendments. Uh, yes, Ms. Gordon. Well, Before we do that, I would think I'll let the public. Does anybody yeah, the public uh, like to comment? Mr. Pradwell, would you like to comment on anything here? Yes. Regarding this hearing? Regarding the resolution? Regarding the resolution. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, what is the council's understanding of the uh, charges that you're about to rule on? What, do you, what, what, what have you been told about it? And I'm asking this to the council. What is that? Was it like a test, Mr. Pradwell? You mean I'm not allowed to ask Mr. Shammy? You can if you want. It's like a test. Mr. Shannon, could you go over the charges again? Because Mr. Sh Mr. Carano wants to know. We know the charges, you know. So yeah, they've been identified. Everything's a shell game here. They've been identified as numbers. I'm okay. asking what were the actual charges. So, so what, what, what do you got to what do? You, what do you got to direct the questions to us for? I, I'm not here to be tested by you in any manner. Yes. I can answer okay. that question. Uh, she has the hard charges right in front of her. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, for purposes of the record. Charge number one says. We're not going to read these charges. Okay. Twenty one. Why don't you just give an overview of the nature and extent of the charges? Give the ones that we're, we're going to be agreed to. Please. Right. That's what I, I was about I'm to say. I'm sorry. And and there were seven that the yes. applicant had agreed to. Number one, from on or about an unknown start date until three twelve fifteen, you aided and abetted Gregory Torres and Victor Diaz to exercise the rights and privileges of your license in violation of NJSA 33 1 25. Number three, in your license renewal application filed on or about June 1st, 2014, you failed to show or disclose certain material facts or falsely or inaccurately responded to questions thereon, specifically by omitting the owner information of the property in section 3.7 dash 
and we are amending it to remove the reference to omission of section 9.3 regarding outside persons to benefit from profits related to the license in violation of NJSA 33 colon 1-25. Number four, on 312.15 you conducted your licensed business without keeping and having on your licensed premises available for inspection a true copy of the application for your current license or a true copy of the last filed long form application or amendment thereto in violation of NJAC 13 colon 2-23.13 parenthesis A2. Number six is a very long one. On 31215, you failed to keep or maintain books of all accounts which were true, complete, and accurate in all respects on your licensed premises or failed to produce same for inspection on demand in violation of NJAC 13.2-23.32. And then it just lists certain documents that, that weren't um, provided. The renewal application, employee list, delivery slips and invoices, records of transactions with registered display service, New Jersey Sales Tax Authority, records of alcoholic beverages sales and miscellaneous income, payment records for purchases of alcoholic beverages, supplies, utilities, lease of equipment, employees, payment of taxes, and all other, other disbursements. That's number six. The next one is number eight. On 312.15, you engaged in or allowed, permitted, or suffered on or about your licensed premises a brawl or act of violence to wit a physical altercation inside the premises during which your staff utilized OC spray using, I'm sorry, resulting in multiple patrons requiring medical treatment in violation of NJAC 13 colon 2-23 Point six parenthesis A two for purposes of the record OC spray is pepper spray. Number sixteen, on or about three twelve fifteen, you permitted or suffered your licensed place of business to be conducted in such a manner as to become a nuisance, requiring police intervention or adversely affecting public safety, specifically by keeping a loaded handgun unsecured in an area easily accessible to patrons in the establishment, creating an undue risk of public safety in violation of NJAC 13.2-23.6B. And the final one, number 18, on or about 312.15, you permitted or suffered your licensed place of business to be conducted in such a manner as to become a nuisance requiring police intervention or adversely affecting public safety, specifically by keeping a blackjack style striking weapon unsecured in an area easily accessible to patrons in the establishment, creating an undue risk of public safety in violation of NJAC 13 colon 2 23.6 parenthesis B. May I comment with It'd be a pleasure. Yes, sir. Uh, with regard to the first charge, uh, my client never was involved with the bar at all. Uh, before, when her husband was alive, or her former husband, or since. So consequently, the two parties mentioned in one, they were employed first by her, her, her former husband, and they just continued the management of the bar. So she had no way of knowing what they were doing right and what they were doing wrong because she was there as a fiduciary only because somebody had to take responsibility for the license. Okay. That, that's one. The other thing is that most of those charges come out of that 312 incident where there was the bar was closing and the certain patrons would not leave and they began to fight. So one of the managers used that pepper spray to break up the fight and had one of the people call the police. So they really called the police to come to the premises and the police showed up about 2, about, uh, two uh, 25 in the morning. So all those other things that came out came out of that. It wasn't, it wasn't that 
she, and it happened. So she, she, it's, she suffered. She's pleading as a fiduciary because she holds the license and not because she's taking any personal responsibility. Thank you. I think we have to thank her for that. Thank you. any more, sir? Yeah, so, I mean, that, that sounds uh, concerning. Weapons uh, and, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of things out of order there. Um, I, you know, the patrons being, being sprayed uh, with pepper spray, uh, violations of a lot of rules. Can you tell me, uh, if those are the charges you're keeping, what, do you know what charges you're about to dismiss? Do, does the council know? Well, the council have the general description of them, yes. And can the public have that general description? It's just a very complicated situation, and I feel the public is not, uh, can't keep track of count one, three, four, six, eight, sixteen. It's a little confusing. You will keep track of much more confusing things, Mr. Crabble, so I'm, I'm astonished that this puzzles you. Really? Right, so, so what are you about to dismiss? Please, let's move on. Yes, Mr. Uh, I, I just would like to say that uh, the, the uh, manager, one of the managers took the course, had a certificate about how to use the pepper spray, did not know that it was illegal. As for the gun, he had a, a permit to uh, purchase it, and he had a permit to carry it. The only thing is he had no business having it on the licensed premises. So that was one of the We provided the certificates to, to uh, Ms. Gaines. Thank you. Anything else? Would you like to uh, Mr. Crabble? Can you answer Mr. Crabble's yes, question? The, the, the charges are, um, the most serious of the charges are the ones that the licensee, in my opinion, pleading guilty to. There's other um, administrative violations in there uh, which deal with record keeping and things of that nature, um, which are somewhat lesser included charges. This kind of thing happens all the time. The director of the ABC, if these were ABC charges, um, works out the arrangements like this. This council, maybe not this very council, but over the years, this council, uh, when faced with charges against administrative, uh, charges against licenses uh, for underage drinking and other things of that nature, uh, have worked out plea arrangements uh, so as to be uh, expeditious relative to time and to ensure the appropriate sanctions and penalties are visited upon the licensee, such as the case here. So I don't think there's anything inappropriate about what's being going on. Okay. In fact, I recommend it as well. Thank you, Mr. Crowell. Thank you. I'm glad I asked those questions. I hope you're glad too, because I am. I am so glad. I, I really mean it. I think that, that you guys need to do a better job of investigating Mr. things and, and asking those questions. Okay. And I, I do have one one more question. Um, so tonight we've had three different hearings. I took four. If you count Perlay was on the uh, resolutions. Um, so that's Degala, De Palis, uh, Mitiara, and Perlay. Uh, can you, sir, tell me um, whether you've accepted political contributions from any of those establishments, have, or have any of the council members uh, been? Gotten, gotten political donations from the bar. Yeah, more nerve than the two. <laughs> I can't answer that. I don't, I don't have any idea at this moment. I could have. I'm not, not sure. I'm not sure at this time, but I may. Do any of the council members know if they've accepted donations from any of the establishments that were uh, on your docket tonight? Would you like to answer, Mr. Brown? Okay. I can tell you on behalf of my client, she never gave a dime. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Okay. All right, is that it, sir? That's all right. Listen, the council and everybody from the project would like to wish everybody a happy and safe 4th of July. What? We got a motion. Sorry. I'm giving my sponsor a motion. I apologize. We got a motion. So moved. With all the enumerated amendments as. We got a roll call, please. Second. Can I get a second? Second. It was by Mr. Fleming. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. I get a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Thank you. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes.